game to be played at night here at Ross 8. The 81st meeting between the Boilermakers of Purdue and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame coming up. Big house at Ross Age Stadium tonight. Our matchup and our college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame on the road with a two and one record to take on the one and two Boilermakers of Purdue. The head coach at Purdue, Danny Hope, has said Notre Dame night could not have come at a better time after a tough loss last week to Northern Illinois. Welcome to West Lafayette, everybody. I'm Brad Nussler. For the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, they're 2-1. and one. The big story, they've scored 33 points or more in each of their games, and they've done it with a high-powered offense. Michael Floyd, though, is out for the regular season. Armando Allen and Jimmy Clausen are banged up with up-to-the-minute reports on their injuries. We go down on the field to Aaron Andrews. EA. Brad, Notre Dame head coach Charlie Weiss wanted to see how running back Armando Allen practiced in warm-ups today. Coach Weiss said that Allen mentioned this is the best he's felt all week long. Allen will play tonight, but Coach Weiss said he will not start. As for his quarterback, Jimmy Clausen, and what seems to be the most famous toe in America, Clausen mentioned to me he hopes the adrenaline takes over for, for the pain. Now, he will wear a metal plate in his right shoe. That's to keep his right big toe from bending. He says the less it bends, the better he hopes to feel. Brad? All right, Aaron, we're going to watch that as Notre Dame has to deal with those issues against an old rival on the road. How will it affect them? Purdue, can they bounce back from a tough loss a week ago to Northern Illinois? In a minute, good just standing and throwing. The big question will be, how he handles it if he has to get away from some pressure or if he ends up on the bottom of a pile and gets that foot tangled up with a bunch of bodies. I think we will see his backup sophomore Dane Chris tonight some by design perhaps a little bit more by necessity. Dane Chris Charlie told us he would like to get him involved in the first half and you and I have been talking about this for two days that gives him the pressure off him if it gets down to the right. point where he's got to play in the second. Absolutely half. and Charlie Weiss said you know it was a lot more work for me this week as an offensive coordinator because I had to put two different packages together. Together. One for if Jimmy can play and what we want to do to this Purdue defense and what we can do with Dane Christ that he's most comfortable with. You know, I talked about this a couple of minutes ago for this guy, the first year head coach of the Boilermakers, Danny Hope. He told you and I and Aaron the other day, Notre Dame couldn't have come at a better time. They won their opener against Toledo. They played very, very well against Oregon, and right now that loss is looking better because Absolutely. of what happened today. But then they hit the skids against Northern Illinois last week, and they want to get that taste out of their mouth. And the best way to get that taste out of their mouth is to play well early. I think the early moments of this game are going to be huge for both teams. I think for Notre Dame, weathering the early storm, and for Purdue, getting off to a good, fast start on both sides of the ball. Another thing both coaches talked about was pressure. Can we force some on their opposing quarterback and can we handle it on our quarterback it's a blackout at Ross aid it's the first time Purdue has worn all black uniforms in three years last time out was against Wisconsin Notre Dame won the toss they have deferred that means that Nick Tausch will tee it up they started this back in 1896 for the fighting Irish of Notre Dame, the only team they have played more than Purdue is Navy. I tell you what, that suggests to me as, as much as anything that Jimmy Clausen is, it's a precarious situation. If they win the toss and don't take the ball as good as their offense has been the first three games, a little interesting there. What a nice feel. Night game at Ross Aid. It doesn't happen often. Aaron Valentine and Royce Adams wait on the other end. The kick will go right to the goal line to Adams. And he gets popped right at the 20 yard line. So that's where the Purdue offense, led by Joey Elliott, the captain, the senior who's waited his turn. It seems like this has been a theme with us, yeah. with quarterbacks that have been around quite a while. Joey's hung in there. 
Played behind Painter, who put up big yardage and is now a member of the Indianapolis Colts. And here's Joey's turn now, the senior out of Evansville. And I like him. I, he can really throw the football. The ball really shoots out of his hands from the, from the pocket. And he'll throw on first down and flips it out complete. Picked up of about four to Keith Smith. For Joey Elliott, his first career start was against Toledo, and he put three touchdowns on the board. He made a couple of key errors that led to touchdowns in the loss to Oregon. Jared Frank joins Ralph Bolden in the high backfield. Bolden's been very, very good. Here he is on the top sweep. And he gets maybe two yards as we take a look at Purdue's impact players. And Ralph Bolden, he was the number two rusher in the country after two weeks. Aaron Valentine, the receiver, he could be an impact in a lot of ways. He's a good punt returner, but he dropped a couple last week. Right. That could be a negative impact. Mike Neal on their defensive lines. An all-conference performer, a defensive tackle. Four wideouts now, bunched to each side on a third down and four for Joey Elliott. Notre Dame's going to bring an extra man. The throw is complete. It's a first down to Keith Carlos. And Carlos wrapped up as he got to about the 32-yard line. But that's a first down, and that's a nice way to settle Joey Elliott in. Nice job giving the quarterback protection. A five-man rush by Notre Dame. Well picked up by the front. And then Joey Elliott, his first two throws, looks pretty sharp out of the pocket. Carlos is really the most dynamic, the most talented of their wide receiver group, a junior college transfer this year. So first down, just inside the 33. And it's Elliott again. And nobody home this time. Might have been intended for Kyle Adams, the tight end, who got a little bit wrapped up in some traffic. As you take a look at the Purdue offense, on the top of your screen, led by Elliott and Bolden. Tight ends could be big for both teams in this game. A couple of Kyles, Kyle Rudolph for Notre Dame, Kyle Adams for Purdue. Another big key for Purdue is the, the starter at left guard. It was Zach Reckman, a senior, a veteran guy. Rich Schmig is now the starting left guard. He is a redshirt freshman in there because of a suspension to Reckman. Reckman, a one-game suspension hand down by the Big Ten. Here's a toss. Nice catch out in the flats, trying to weave for a first down. And it's going to be short, but a pickup of eight for Key Smith. Last week against Northern Illinois, Joey Hel Elliott told us and the coaches told us, you know, they, they just couldn't seem to get the ball rolling offensively. They they had a couple turnovers. They uh, they couldn't get their defense off the field a couple times. They had, to, as you mentioned, the, the fumbled punts by Valentine. They just never got in a good offensive rhythm. They're off to a pretty good start right here. This will be a nice one for Bolden if they can get a first down, and he's got a whole bunch more. Bolden down to the 33-yard line. There's what they like about Ralph Bolden. 26 yards in a hurry. Well, coming into the night, he's averaging 140 yards a game. He's got great vision, and then when he gets through that initial line, he has excellent speed, sprinter-type speed. And Blanton for Notre Dame, lucky to grab a hold of him, or that would have been a touchdown for the Boilermaker. You talk about a perfect start in the opening quarter for the home team. Seventh play already of the drive, and Purdue's worked it to the Notre Dame 33-yard line. There's a big hit. Nice job defensively. Darius Fleming, the linebacker with a big hit and a loss on the play. There's the Notre Dame starting defense up on top with Ryan and Williams and Johnson and Lewis Moore. The linebackers Fleming and Smith, the two Smiths, Fleming making that play. The secondary, the big guy back there, is a guy that knows how to intercept passes in Kyle McCarthy. And on second down and 13, you want to watch out if you're Joey Elliott to where number 28 might be back there. And Joey's got an empty backfield. And John Tenuta's defense probably going to bring at least one extra guy here defensively for Notre Dame. The throw is complete on a slant. And it's a first down. It might be a touchdown. It is. We told you Aaron Allentine 
Valentine could be an impact player. He just impacted the first quarter. Well, it's just a little cross by the two receivers. Valentine started out and came in. Robert Blanton kind of got picked away from the play. The ball actually looked like it surprised Valentine a little bit, but it stuck to his hip, and he took it the rest of the way for the touchdown. Carson Wiggs in for the point after. A dynamic opening three minutes and change for the Boilermakers of Purdue. Just like that, Jimmy Clausen says, boys, we got work to do. We're already in the hole by seven on a 36-yard touchdown pass. Boilermakers by seven. Had someone told this crowd that their team would go 80 yards in eight plays in the opening three minutes for a touchdown. They would take it. There's the guy that did take it, 36 yards for the score. Valentine's second touchdown catch of the year. And now Carson Wiggs will tee it up. Barry Gallup and Theo Riddick are back deep for Notre Dame. This will be Riddick at about the eight yard line. Riddick's got a seam. Look out, K.O. Riddick. Gonna be dragged down by the kicker who might have saved a touchdown. Wiggs, nice job, 35 yard return. So Jimmy Clausen set to take the field. Charlie Weiss says he is the undisputed leader and a captain in only his junior year. He said Eric Olson's a captain too, but he said we took that vote in springtime. Had we waited till fall, he'd be the number one captain on the team, regardless of position. Now you can see on tape, I mean, I, you know, I've watched him his whole career. He just looks so much more comfortable, so much more poised right now. And then, of course, the arm has always been there. In the shotgun. They'll keep it on the ground. Flags down on the first snap offensively for Notre Dame. Jonas Gray, Jonas Gray is the guy that carried the ball. Offside. Defense. Number 93. Five yard penalty. First down. Let's take you back to last week. Jimmy Clausen. And here's how the injury occurred. It was really an awkward looking play. He said I wasn't taking a knee or trying to go down. I just kind of buckled and then my foot got caught underneath me and it it's actually not just his big toe. It's his big toe and the one right next to it. So the plate is actually there to hold up two toes uh, to give support. We got to give those toes a new name like number yeah. one and number two or something like that. Here's the same handoff that they used on the opening play before the penalty. This one goes for three yards for Jonas Gray. Ryan Kerrigan made the stop. It'll bring up second down and about two. Jimmy Clausen, when we talked to him the other day, I said, Jimmy, you ever had that problem with the turf toe before? He said, matter of fact, I did last year. And it bothered him for a good part of the second part of the season. So at least he knows how to deal with the pain, I guess, if anything. Well, the problem as a right-handed quarterback, your right foot is your plant foot. It's what you drive off of to throw, and that big toe is critically important. Clausen wants to throw a screen and does, and it's complete. And it's a first down and all the way down inside the 40 and weaving his way to the 31 yard line is Jonas Gray. And the encouraging thing for Jimmy Clausen and for Charlie Weiss is that Jimmy was able to move a little bit. You know, he's, he's never going to be a running quarterback or an option type quarterback, but he's got to be able to manage the pocket and move enough. And he was able to get away from enough pressure to throw this screen to Jonas Gray. Even though it looked like he was hobbled a little bit, he still was effective in getting a good throwing lane. Gray did not play against Purdue in the game last year. And you can see a little bit of a hobble or a wobble on Clausen as he comes up under center this time. First, I, would, I would guess they would not put him under center very much tonight. Well, Keep they, him in the shot. Yeah, yeah, they backed him up right after I said it. Here's Gray trying to get to the corner. Nice job defensively by Joe Holland, the outside linebacker. That's a loss of six. You know, there's 27 kids on this Purdue team that are from the state of Indiana. So th this game against Notre Dame is huge for them. I don't know that anybody takes it more seriously than that guy, Joe Holland. Both his parents, Michael and Dolores, both went to Notre Dame. His grandfather's a Notre Dame grad. He grew up a huge Notre Dame fan, but all that changed when he got a scholarship offer to come to Purdue. He has started every game of his career here in West Lafayette. And it forces second down and 17 now. Empty backfield. As Clausen set the throw and fires out, and it's incomplete. Intended for Golden Tate. And now 
Matt Blossom's going to be facing a third down and a whole chunk. Remember, Michael Floyd gone at least for the regular season. Possibility he could come back for a bowl game at the end of the year. There's Michael, and boy, you talk about an impact player. Yeah. He is something special. Big plays. I mean, he was averaging almost 28 yards per catch, five touchdowns. I mean, every time they threw it out to him, he made a big play, it seemed. Lawson hasn't thrown an interception since way back last November. He's got third and long here, and a flag flies in. Sam Young may have come out of his stance, and if it's a false start, it's... Full start. Offense. Number 74. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Now you're talking about 22 yards. they got to get all the way down to the 21-yard line for a first down. It's an experienced offensive line now. That's something that Jimmy didn't have when he was a yeah. freshman. Charlie says, you know, it makes a whole difference in the world. Well, it makes a tremendous difference in your run game. They're running the ball better this year than they have the previous two years. They're protecting the quarterback better. And it really all starts up front. It is a veteran group, but this is a difficult situation for, for any offensive line right here. They have to go about half your screen wherever you're watching to get a first down. Well, they might get five of it back. Mike Neal. Looked like he got a head start. Offside. Defense. From 92. Five yard penalty. Third down. See, that's called playing with your ears instead of your <laughs> eyes. I mean, you're listening to the quarterback's voice instead of watching the football. You're a defensive tackle. I mean, you're about eight inches away from that football. You shouldn't get drawn off sides like that, but he's in earshot of the quarterback as well. As the starting lineup on the top of your screen, including that offensive line for another day. Boston again flushed out of the pocket, throws on the run, throws a strike. Is it going to be enough for the first down? A pickup of 15, about a yard, maybe too short, I think, to Camaro. But again, the, the positive thing for Jimmy Clausen, he had to leave the pocket. He got out there with some quickness. He made a throw on the run off his back foot, his right foot, and threw a strike. And yeah, Charlie Weiss early in the game on a fourth and one is going to go for it. They're three out of four so far this year on fourth down conversions. Gray in the backfield. As again, Clawson will backpedal into the shotgun. Two tight ends set. He'll keep it on the ground. And Gray is going to be knocked for a loss. See, now this is where the injury hurts. Because normally on a fourth and one, you'd put your quarterback under the center and run the ball from, the, from an eye formation or something. But because of the toe injury, they kept him in the shotgun. That enabled the Purdue defense to get great penetration and stop the play on fourth down. Touchdown. So far, fun for Purdue. They went 80 yards in their opening drive. Let's see how they do now after stopping the fourth and one for Notre Dame. Boilermakers at their own 25. A quick opening draw. Ralph Bolden got a couple. You know, you talk about the last 10 years for these two teams, and it's amazing how close they are in record. And for Purdue, that whole stretch for the most part was Joe Tiller. Notre Dame had more than one coach. And Danny hopes in his first year as head coach. Charlie in his fifth year. 31 and 22. Seven and six a year ago. Purdue only won four games last year. But as I said earlier, when they have a season when they beat Notre Dame, it's usually a successful season and a bowl game at the end. This throw just a little bit behind Keith Smith. Oh, he might have had a big gainer. Yeah, that had a chance to be a big-time play because the safeties had kind of spread out in the defensive set for Notre Dame. There was nobody in the middle of the field. If he catches this on the run, I mean, he is running right to the goalpost. But you're right, it was a little bit behind him on the throw by Elliott. Otherwise, Keith Smith might still be running. Purdue came into this game 38% on their third down conversions. They got third down at seven here. That's Smith, the motion man. Elliott across the middle. First down to Smith. And Smith rumbles all the way out near the midfield strike. Pick up of 22 more. And now Joey Elliott's going with a hurry up here. He's getting his troops lined up with a first down at the 49. It's a little change of pace here for the Boilermakers. 
Ground game doesn't get anything that time either. Loss of one for Bolden. Carey Neal, the defensive end out of Bun, North Carolina, made the stop. See if Purdue's going to huddle or just walk up to the line again. We're going to wait for Elliott because he came halfway over to get a word from the coaching staff. Nice second down at 12. Right up the middle comes the pressure with the passes ricocheted off the hands of Ralph Bolden out in the flat. And it brings up third down and long. Kind of interesting, John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, he has been defined his whole career by pressure and, and being very aggressive. So far in this possession, now he blitzed in the first possession and they went right down the field. He's just rushing four guys in this possession. That time they got to him without a blitz, just a four-man rush from his defensive line, playing a little bit more coverage rather than pressure. They picked up one-third and long so far. Let's see if they can do it again on third down at 12. Gonna keep it. Got to about the 48 yard line, picked up four. So it's fourth down for Purdue, and they'll have to punt. Chris Summers will come out to punt, averaging just under 45 yards a kick. And Golden Tate, you've got to be careful on the other end. As the punt return man, there he is, number 23. Flags are down as Summers hits a high punt but short down to the 19-yard line. But again, penalty markers at the line of scrimmage. Penalty marker on the play. Pat Garvey is our referee. Illegal formation. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Be added to the end of the run. More than four men in the offensive backfield. First down. First down. So they'll tack five on and give Notre Dame a little better field position. Gives us a chance to head to Reese Davis in the studio. Reese. All right, Brad. Sports Center right now. Alabama beat Arkansas 35 7. The freshman Trent Richardson got loose for a 52 yard touchdown run to start the day. McElroy throwing for a career high 291 yards and three touchdowns as the tide rolls easily. And over on ABC, number five, Penn State. First play from scrimmage. Daryl Clark, Chaz Powell, 79 yards. You'll recall Clark only threw for 86 yards in the whole game last year. Here's Notre Dame getting set to throw and coming off to his secondary receiver and it's gray down the sideline. Nice job by Jimmy Clausen. Yep. And this is one of the things Charlie Weiss said is different about Jimmy Clausen this year. He's not trying to make every play a big play down the field. Now watch, he's reading downfield. He's looking deep, looking deep. It's not there. So he takes what the defense gives him in the outlet throw. But this little throw turns into a nice game because Jonas Gray is able to break a tackle. That, that's just a quarterback that is playing more under control than at any point in his career. Jonas Gray has done a great job filling in for the injured Armando Allen so far here in the first quarter. First down for the Irish, their own 47 flags again. Kyle Rudolph might have had Full the quick start. jump. Offense, number nine, five-yard penalty. First down. We mentioned the development of Jimmy Clausen. I saw this play on tape last week against Michigan State. Watch Clausen step up in the pocket, but then he remembers he's got his tight end Kyle Rudolph out in the flat and just flings it out there. It's, it's a guy who's playing with great awareness right now. A lot of quarterbacks would take this and run automatically. He knew where the line of scrimmage was. He knew where his outlet receiver was, and he turned it into a big-time play just by instinct and awareness. And what he had to Gray was good for 23. Now he's going deep, and his receiver broke off the pattern. Golden Tate ran it out, and Jimmy threw that one about 50 yards downfield. 
Now, the critical thing now for Notre Dame with the absence of Michael Floyd is who else is going to emerge on the other side of Golden Tate yep. because if they don't have a real definite threat on the other side then teams are just going to they're going to roll their coverages to Golden Tate. They're going to take him away. They've got to have a threat on both sides of the formation. One of the guys I think could do it is a freshman number 11 and he's in there. Shaq Evans he's up to the top of your screen. He's got great speed. And again throwing on a run and completing it to midfield to Golden Tate. Jimmy Clausen with the throw that's complete to bring up third down and about six. Now again, we're seeing Clausen have to move in the pocket and so far so good with that right toe. I mean, he's able to do it and you can see, I mean, it's not going to be a comfortable game for him. I mean, you, know, he, you can take medication, you can wrap it up, you can put a plate in there, but it's going to hurt and it's going to throb and it's going to be uncomfortable. But He's a tough kid, and he's showing that here tonight. The big third down here to try to keep the Irish drive going in Purdue territory. Dawson again goes deep on the sideline. Almost caught by Golden Tate, and the flag is down. This is incomplete. David Pender. One of the top players in the Big Ten. Pass interference. Defense. Number nine. 15 yard penalty. On the I was going to say one of the tops in the Big Ten at breaking up passes. This time played through the receiver trying to break this one up. Well, this is something that Notre Dame does as well as anybody in the country right now. Take their shots deep down the field. Again, with Golden Tate and Michael Floyd, two big, physical, fast receivers, that has been something that they have just done all three of their games, and now they take their first shot in the fourth game, and they get the penalty. Well, you go back to that Nevada game, it seemed like every time you and I saw a highlight, it yeah. was Clawson going to Floyd for about a mile. Gray inside, handoff, down to the 30-yard line, picked up four. Joe yeah. Holland again in on the stop. I think one of the reasons Notre Dame does that so much is because their receivers, and again, Floyd out now, but with Tate and Floyd, not only did they have the speed to run by corners if they settled, but they're also physical guys that could go up and fight for the football if it was a if it was kind of a jump ball type situation. I and mean, Golden Tate's a physical guy, was a running back, but they converted to wide receiver. Michael Floyd was 6'3, 220, 225 pounds. So give him a chance to make plays. Again, Paris and Evans in there as extra wide receivers. Quick throw, incomplete, intended for Tate. Coverage just on Brandon King, who missed the last couple of games for Purdue with a deep thigh bruise, and they need him back here. He's a veteran defender, a senior out of Warner Robins, Georgia. So again, third down. One guy I would expect to see Jimmy Clausen look to here soon would be his tight end, Kyle Rudolph. He's trying to throw it outside a lot. Rudolph is a matchup problem for any defense. He yeah. is a big physical tight end at 6'6", 260. You saw him come right at you on that last shot, number nine on the right side. On third down at six. Clausen steps up in the pocket. Whoops. Almost stumbled on that foot. This is what they don't want him to have to do. Jason Warner, the outside linebacker, made the stop. And flags at the end of the play as they have to separate these two teams near the Purdue sideline. Well, this could be big depending on what it is. Yeah, you're right. That That's not the kind of play you want Jimmy Clausen to have to make. First, he kind of stumbled just trying to get out of the pocket. And then... You saw the tackle and his legs getting wrapped up at the end of the play. I mean, it's nothing dirty, nothing wrong. No. You're going to play hard, but that's a, that's always a risk. After the end of the play, it was over. Personal foul. Taunting. Defense. Number 92. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Oh, boy, that a killer. Well, Mike Neal, number 92, you'll see him on the rush. Doesn't get to Clawson and then chases the play. Werner makes a great play right there. And there's the taunt. You saw number 92 come up and give Clawson an earful. And that's not what your defensive captain's supposed to do. 
No, that's a, that's a gift for Notre Dame. Sure is. And then coming into the game, Purdue, one of the least penalized teams in all of college football. Only 11 penalties coming into the game. This is the third time tonight on third down they've been penalized. They're killing themselves right now. So now Notre Dame in the red zone at the 16-yard line. Flags again down. Cross into the corner. Touchdown. Golden Tate. But again, a penalty marker down. I think it's coming back by the reaction of the crowd. Here's the call. Legal formation. Offense. The 32. But if you're a cornerback for Purdue, if you're Brandon King or David Pender or anybody else they put in, you better expect that they are going to try to throw it over your head several times tonight because, first of all, the quarterback has the arm and the accuracy to do it, and these wideouts are physical, and they know how to go up and catch the ball in traffic at the height of their jump. So they'll have to try to do it all over again. Notre Dame. All three of their penalties on the offense for 15 yards. That one cost them a touchdown. Two tight ends for Clawson. Gray inside handoff broke one tackle. And now wrapped up by the black flag defense of Purdue. You know, Aaron reported before the game as far as our man, Armando Allen's status was that he felt good, the best he felt all week. He was going to play but not start. Uh, we have not seen him yet. I mean, he's over there with a ball cap on, not a football helmet. That, that's not an encouraging sign. This guy has had back-to-back 100-yard -back games. He's played exceptionally well in the early part of this season. He's a great receiver. He even threw a touchdown pass this year already. So right now they got a freshman in there, and Theo Riddick. In the backfield with Jimmy Clawson. Eighth play of the Notre Dame drive, second down and ten. Clawson fires, overshot his intended receiver. Duval Camara was back there. Two guys in the vicinity defensively for Purdue. Again, just, just planning on that right foot, pushing off of that right toe and, and transferring his weight from his right foot to his left foot. It's just kind of awkward for him right now. Now, he has a good enough arm that he doesn't have to get his body into it all the time. But in terms of being accurate and consistent, uh, it's tough when you only have one good wheel. Notre Dame with a big third down when we come back. 2.32 remaining first quarter. Purdue leading by a touchdown. Feel like doing something? Oh, wicked hit. Thanks, Reese, for the update. Third down and 10 here for Notre Dame. Jimmy Clausen off play action. Fires to the end zone. Incomplete intended for Kyle Rudolph, his tight end. Nice job by the middle linebacker, Chris Carlino, number 47, who was in underneath coverage, underneath Rudolph. All he's got to do is just stay in his hip pocket. Don't go for the fake. Stay there and make Clausen have to make a perfect throw over his head. Nice job by the middle linebacker. So Nick Tausch will come out to attempt the field goal to try to put Notre Dame on the board. A 34-yard attempt. He's four out of five so far in the year. Tausch with a kick that away. That is good. So Notre Dame with a good-looking drive. They were helped by the taunting penalty yeah. or they might have had to give it up a lot earlier but they get the field goal from Tausch. Well whether you're living in the Chicagoland area or if your heart never left the city you can log on to ESPNChicago.com for local coverage of the Bears, Bulls, Cubs, Sox, Blackhawks plus all the area's college football including Notre Dame right here Northwestern and Illinois ESPN Chicago, ESPN Boston and coming soon ESPN.com for Dallas, New York and L.A. These are some of the stories you'd be following. The Illini Got walloped in Columbus. The Bears and the Seahawks getting ready to go at it. And Northwestern, a loser to Minnesota today. Big win for Tim Brewster and the Golden Gophers. Those are just some of the things you'll have on ESPNChicago.com. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Aaron Andrews. Pretty nice in West Lafayette. We were worried about rain. There was a front that I think is going to miss us to the south if we're lucky. But right now it's a beautiful night. Got that feel of fall in the air. And Joey Elliott and Purdue set offensively after this kick return. And they lead by seven to three. The 
was a 60 yard drive and 10 plays to get the field goal for Notre Dame. It's going to pass all the way down to the goal line, and Valentine's going to try it from the one. Not a dangerous, got it out to about the 18-yard line. Of course, it's been known over the years, great quarterbacks, Pro Football Hall of Famer Len Dawson sort of started it, two-time All-American. Bob Greasy, Pro Football Hall of Famer with the Dolphins. Mike Phipps came in as an All-American in the late 60s, and it was Gary Danielson, good friend of ours, 12 years in the NFL, mostly with Detroit and Cleveland. Mark Kerman, an All-American from 77 to 80. Jim Everett, big guy with the Rams for a long time in the NFL, and now Drew Brees, if you want him on a fantasy team, you're looking good. And Kyle Orton is the starting quarterback for the Broncos. Not a bad group. No, not at all. And here's the newest, Joey Elliott. He's only got one year to play. I don't think he'll end up in that cradle, but he's doing yeah. a nice job in the first quarter. Well, and the guy that he backed up for the last couple of years, Curtis Painter, is the number three quarterback with the Indianapolis Colts right now. And we, we asked Joey, you know, do you still talk to him? How's he doing? He says, man, he's living the dream. Living you the know, dream. He's living the dream. He's he just talking to him every day. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. You know, he's done a nice job here. Waited his turn. Another one of the Evansville guys, as Bob Greasy was. Here's a handoff, first down, and Bolden almost broke it. Oh, excuse me, Jason Taylor. That time, pick up a nine. I, I like Elliott. I mean, I like his demeanor. He's got the arm to make all the throws, but just in visiting with him. You know, he's the son of a coach. His yep. dad was a coach. This is a picture from the uh, Manning Passing Academy. Of course, a great camp for young quarterbacks that Peyton and Eli and Archie Manning run every year down in Louisiana. And you see Joey Elliott there with a couple what a big time quarterbacks down to his counselors. No kidding. All of uh, rather uh, Heisman Trophy winner Sam Bradford. Here's Elliott on the keeper down the run out across the 40 to the 42. Those guys right in the middle of two orange yeah. t shirt guys. That was Archie and then Eli and then Peyton was standing yeah. behind him. So some pretty good talent. There. I worked at that camp one year. It's, it's an outstanding camp. And, and the thing that's cool about it is that Peyton and Eli, I mean, they don't just put their name on it and don't show up. They're there. They work with the kids. And the best part is they take those college kids and work them out. They go and throw with them, they instruct them, they talk to them, they watch film with them. It's really a, a great deal for the college guys who go down there as counselor. Second down and four for Elliott and the Boilermakers. Here comes a blitz this time and it paid off. The run blitz dialed up by Tanuta. And I don't know where they're going to mark this one. He's going to land back at about the 26 yard line. It's going to be a loss of roughly three. Fleming and Smith, the two linebackers there to make the stop. Final note on that quarterback camp, Jevin Sneed was a guy that uh, basically hung out with Joey and did drills all the time, and he was really feeling for him Friday yeah. after what happened to Ole Miss on Thursday night. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that, that only guys that play the position can really understand completely and know what that feels like. Third down at six. And the quarter is going to come to a close before Purdue can snap it. But a good quarter for the Boilermakers at home in front of a big hometown crowd. Only the sixth night game in ross Aid history. Off to a good start for the first 15 minutes. Purdue, 7-3. Our college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Purdue leading tailgate week presented by Kingsford Charcoal. And right now, Purdue's got a big third down here with the lead as we start the second quarter. Brad Nestler, Todd Blackledge, and Aaron Andrews and our ESPN crew with you at West Lafayette. Joey Elliott, here comes some pressure. He steps away from it and incomplete. No flags. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if Kyle McCarthy would have gone for the ball instead of the hit, he might have had his fourth interception on the season. He's had an interception in each of the first three games. He timed it just right, but he was going for the hit instead of the interception, and he forces the fourth down. It goes back to last year. He's had an interception in five straight games if you go no. back to last season, which is pretty phenomenal. Chris Summers to punt. End over end punts, fair catch taken on his knees at about the 28-yard line by Golden Tates. This was right before 
the end of the quarter at the end of the quarter Charlie Weiss talking things over with Jimmy Clausen does that mean a different quarterback yes it does for right now yeah well I, and we said we were expected to see Dane Crisp I mean they wanted to play him and get him into the ball game by design the question will be how long will they play him or how much will they play him? now he's got a great arm he's got the ability to make all the plays that Jimmy Clausen can make he just doesn't have the experience to read the whole field and have the whole offensive package that they have with Clausen. as you saw another California kid and here he is running it for about 15 yards Brandon King ran him out of bounds he's a big guy and you see Clausen with a big smile he's like that's it partner 6'4", 235 pounder. And really a nice call. First play, let him run, show that, hey, the quarterback we have in now, Purdue, is a little different cat. He's got a little more mobility. He doesn't have a bad toe. So you're going to have to defend a few different things in this offensive pack. Got it out to the 43 yard line, in fact. Both teams with five first downs. Here's the end around the Golden Tates. That one kind of took a while to develop or something. Didn't look as smooth, but you can see the package for Dane Christ is, is much different than Jimmy Claus. It's almost, those first two plays were almost like a wildcat formation type offense with a starting quarterback. Now two tight ends come in there to help the cause on second down at six of the opening minute of the second quarter. See, Notre Dame ran some wildcat, but they did it with Armando Allen. Right. And uh, Armando Allen has yet to step on the field tonight for Notre Dame. So Chris now in an empty backfield. Tate comes the other way, and now Chris wants to throw. And does, and in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. And that was pretty good throw. Probably a pass that should have been caught. Again, this year, you talk about the Notre Dame offense and that guy's not in there. That guy's not in there. That guy's out for the regular season. That leaves Golden Tate as the big play man that's still on the field. And it, it makes a difference. I mean, Notre Dame has been so efficient offensively in the first quarter of their first three games, virtually unstoppable. But uh, a different story tonight against Purdue. And here's a Notre Dame quarterback under center. Something we haven't seen much of. And it's a draw play. There's Golden and Tate. Golden Tate. All the way down inside the 40. Golden Tate, the well, team. the guy you didn't X off yeah, is the guy right. that just took off. And they put him in a different spot, kind of hit him from the Purdue defense, and then handed the football to him. Again, he was a running back to start his career, and they uh, they really caught the Purdue defense, expecting pass all the way. And Golden Tate shows you he knows what to do with the ball in his hands. <laughs> nice hurdle at the end. They got it all the way down to the 38-yard line. And now Tate is in the Wildcat. And Christ is off on a wing. And they go straight ahead. I don't know if they got anything. Jason Werner made a nice play to stop him that time. Might have gotten a yard. Here's Golden Tate last week. Nice pattern long down the sideline against Michigan State. And then I'm going into the band. Whoops. Wrong band. Yeah. That's a wrong band. They're not going to catch you. Yeah, you're at home. <laughs> you just got to know which band you're jumping into. <laughs> that's that's a classic right there. <laughs> he goes into a mosh pit, and the tuba yeah. guy wouldn't even catch him. That's like uh, that's like a Wrigley when they throw the home run back on the field. <laughs> Here's a toss sweep. This time it's huge, and he's got a convoy in front. Still going. All the way down to the 17-yard line. And see, just the change of pace with Dane Christ and the, the Wildcat-type plays, the quarterback run on first down, it just creates a little hesitancy in this Purdue defense. And now this is just a normal toss sweep, kind of a power running play, but it goes for big yardage against Purdue. They've got this Purdue defense back on their heels a little bit in this drive. Robert Hughes really moved from tailback to fullback to replace the injured James Aldridge. In that case, you got a big gainer and another first down at the 17 of Purdue. And here's Hughes again. The cutback is a beauty inside the 10 and down to the 9. Boy, great block by Mike Ragone, number 83, and Kyle Rudolph. Both tight ends. Watch this block on the end. Both tight ends secure the edge for Hughes. And then he turns it up right in between them. I mean, those are two outstanding players. Ragone really came into Notre Dame a highly touted, highly recruited guy, but knee injuries have really 
kept him off the field. Good looking drive. Field. A different looking drive for Notre Dame. Six runs. The one pass that should have probably been caught, but they've been doing this with power and misdirection. Some end arounds and some wildcat. And now a straight handoff and a first down. Almost to the goal line. Goes Robert Hughes. He got it to the two where it's first and goal. Notre Dame this year coming into the game tonight averaging 155 yards a game rushing. That is significantly, significantly better than the two years prior. I mean, they just had not been able to run the football. 73 yards so far tonight. And uh, that makes a big difference. I mean, look at that. From 2007 and 2008, the worst two in Notre Dame history. But this year, again, that veteran offensive line makes a big difference. By the way, Charlie Weiss has never lost a game at Notre Dame when his team has outrushed the opposition. 17-0. First and goal at the two. And it's Hughes for the touchdown. Just powered his way behind his center, Olsen and Trevor Robinson, the right guard. That's just plain smash mouth there for most of that drive. The first play with the quarterback run on the edge set the Purdue defense back on its heels, and then they just pounded them all the way down the field and into the end zone. Here's another look. Nice job. Again, the tight end got a good lead block. Bobby Berger, actually, the tight end playing at a fullback type of position. And now Nick Tausch to try to make it 10 7. And does. 73 yards in nine plays with a backup quarterback. Jimmy Clausen's going, nice job, my man. Notre Dame in front, 10 7. September, Notre Dame leading 10 7. In the final weekend of September. Irish trying to go to three and one. Purdue trying to even their record at two and two. Royce Adams waiting the kick from Nick Tosh. This one's going to bounce. Valentine will take it on the hop at the eight. Valentine trying to cut it outside. They're going to stretch it out. Notre Dame is and knock him out of bounds before he can get to the 20. And we're talking about Monday Night Football. Speaking of with a flag down. Three, actually, all thrown in the same area. We'll only use one of those flags. <laughs> After the play was over, personal foul, made hit, receiving team, number 24, half the distance from goal line. Well, I thought it was going to go the other way. And as it is, it puts Purdue in a big time hole. Let's take another look. I don't think it was over there by the by the tackle. I think it was somewhere else on the field because where the flags were thrown was away from where the ball was. There's only one Purdue guy there, so it couldn't have been on him. But, but the bottom line, another very dumb penalty by Purdue, a team that had not been penalized very much in their first three games, trying to play with emotion, trying to be aggressive. Six penalties, that's, you can't do that and win games. And start inside your own 10-yard line. Elliott sprints out to throw and completes it to Smith. And Keith Smith has got it out for first down as we go out. Therese Davis, Reese. All right, Brad, I just want to give you a little peek on what's going on in the family of networks on ESPNU. Georgia has a 14-3 lead on Arizona State in the third quarter. Story of the night so far on ESPN2. Florida is rolling, but Tim Tebow was knocked out of the game on a sack. He was just recently carted away from the sideline and appeared to be feeling ill. Uh, remember, he did have a respiratory illness coming into the game. Fourth quarter, 34-7 Gators. Last hit we saw make anybody yell. He already wasn't doing well, as we said, and of course he and some of his teammates came separately to that game on a chartered flight because of the illness that Florida's had on its team for much of the week. So they're trying to get healthy and winning the game big, but uh, they're Superman type quarterback. You can't take hits like that yeah. and always get up. Purdue's mixed it up pretty well. 99 yards passing so far for Joey Elliott here in the second quarter. He's got second down and 11. You look behind it. Bolden with him in the backfield. He's going to swing it out to Bolden. Made a man miss. Nice move out there on the corner. That's what they like about this guy. Ralph Bolden picked up 
about six. Well, Purdue has been known to sling it around the field a little bit. This time a year ago, they were throwing more than they are right now, about 59% of the time. This year, it's about half and half. Under the new head coach, Danny Hope, former offensive line coach for Joe Tiller. When he was with Joe before becoming Eastern Kentucky's head coach and then coming back as a coach in waiting a couple of years ago. And trust me, being the son of an offensive line coach, they prefer running more yes. than throwing. I can guarantee you that. Third down and five. Elliott got away from one and two. Flags are down, though, as he sends this one down the sideline. Probably going to have a holding call after all of that time spent in the backfield. Holding. Offense. In the 23. Ten-yard penalty. Still third down. That penalty will be declined. So Fourth Notre down. Dame will decline the penalty and force the punts. It'll be fourth down and five. Good coverage downfield. Notre Dame has been rushing four on the uh, early downs, and on third down, they've been bringing a little extra pressure. That time they brought a, a blitz, and Ralph Bolden trying to pick up the blitz got caught for the holding. The so Summers to punt, and Golden Tate again back deep. As we said, could be a dangerous return man, but he's had a fair catch these punts so far. It's going to be a good spot for Notre Dame to start with whichever quarterback we're going to see. Jimmy Clausen doesn't have a helmet on. His team's got the lead, though, by three. Presented by Kingsford Charcoal. Right now, Notre Dame with a three-point lead, and they've got the ball at their own 38-yard line. Back in they're the going to go Wildcat again. And on a run across the 40 to the 41-yard line. So Golden Tate on the carry again. We've got a who am I for you. Played the CFL. Started my career, the alma mater, Montana State. Led Purdue to 10 bowl games and 87 wins. The winningest coach in Purdue Boilermaker history, Joe Tiller. Now retired. I don't know that he's necessarily away from football because he's back here and he's going to join us in the booth here in a second. Yeah. <laughs> second down and seven. So again, Golden Tate getting the call. And on the handoff, heading to the corner, Riddick. Riddick, a nice cut back, and he's got a first down all the way down to the 35. The freshman goes for 24 yards and a Notre Dame first down. We welcome our old buddy and the winningest coach in Purdue history, Joe Tiller. Joe, good to see you. Good to you see and Arnett drove all the way over for the game. <laughs> yeah, we did, 1,282 miles. <laughs> From just, Buffalo, Wyoming, Yes, right? sir, just a lovely drive in the afternoon. So, so. How is, uh, how's retirement so far? It's been great. We've been able to take in some football games. I miss a headset, I'll say that. <laughs> uh, but uh, We but might be able to let you keep this one here. We'll <laughs> no, see if well, Cody will let you keep this. I don't know about this. that time. <laughs> First down, Notre Dame. And to give. Again, it's to Robert Hughes, who's been doing a good job here in this first half. Coach, I know, I think it was back in 97 when maybe one of the biggest wins you ever had was against Notre Dame. It was. You know, we had lost uh, our opener, our first game here at Purdue to Toledo on the road, and I think uh, we had, like, zero chance of winning the game to the outside world, but we thought we could do some things to keep them off balance, and uh, lo and behold, we won that game. It really kick-started the program. Second down here for the Irish at the Boilermaker 32 yard line with Christian at quarterback. Off play action, wants to throw, now he's going to run it. This time Purdue closes down defensively at the 29 yard line. Coach, you told us in uh, the last break that you've, you've watched some football, you've gone and seen some games out in Wyoming, but coming back here and watching this team, your old team, a lot of these kids that you recruited, is it strange for you, fun for you? How has that been? It's a lot of fun to see them. Uh, Healthy, number one, Todd. You know, a year ago, we had a horrific year that way. But uh, you're proud of the way they play and hope we can keep it up there. Now here's a big third down for the Purdue defense. And it's Tate behind Chris. And he's going to give it to Golden Tate. And Golden Tate has got the corner down the sideline, out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Another Irish first down. So Golden Tate, the former running back, turned receivers back to running back right now. And really the, the leading tackler for Purdue, Jason Werner, had him. I mean, he had a chance to make the play. Number 24, he has him. He's right here. 
and he just can't bring him down to the ground. Golden Tate is able to kind of stutter step, get outside, and pick up the first down. At the 16-yard line, and now Hughes comes in as the tailback. 11 straight runs now for Notre Dame, dating back to their scoring drive before. Here's another one. Hughes, a group in front. Purdue's going to close this one down, though, as he only got about two yards. Joe, when you came in here, you changed the whole culture of Purdue. It became sort of basketball on grass. Everybody's copying you now. Now I refer to it as sissy ball. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to line up and hit anybody. You want to, you want to play finesse ball. But uh, we came in with a style of offense that we thought could level the playing field a little bit for us, and uh, we had a, a measurable degree of success. Absolutely, you did. Notre Dame's play selection 12 straight times on the ground. Let's see if they continue that. They should, I would imagine, with Tate. And that Wildcat set. And going to try to cut it outside. Holland chasing him. Can't get him. And he's gone. Touchdown. Just too much speed on the corner. Holland, the outside linebacker, couldn't quite contain it. And it's a 14-yard touchdown. I uh, don't know if I should be talking now. <laughs> Go ahead. I made the comment to Morgan Burke downstairs, the athletic director, today. Uh, I said, Jimmy Clausen's not going to make it through the game. And uh, that might be the worst thing that happened to us because they're going to run the ball. They're not going to throw the ball when, as much when Clawson's in there. And obviously, uh, they found something they like. And sure enough, 14 runs later, they got another touchdown and trying to add on to make it a 10 point lead. The extra point is up and good. So the scoring drive goes 62 yards and seven plays. And Golden Tate looking golden as both a running back and a quasi quarterback for Notre Dame. Well, Golden Tate does a nice job of setting up the blocks, but the guy he faked it to, Theo Riddick, gets the key block. He just gets enough of the cornerback, David Pender, to get Golden Tate to the corner. Watch, he fakes it and then sets up this last block right here by Theo Riddick. And then the speed of Golden Tate able to get it to the pylon for the touchdown. You know, we mentioned Armando Allen out. He was the Wildcat back. They had nine snaps of Wildcat last week in their win against Michigan State. And Armando Allen ran a touchdown and threw one. Golden Tate, the Wildcat guy this week, and uh, doing a pretty nice job of it as well. What do you think of that? type of offense. I mean, that's become one of the... Oh, that's my style things. of football. Todd, the same thing you played at Penn State, right? <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, but, not uh, at all. <laughs> we're high formation all the way. I really think that's the next page of this spread stuff. Yeah. I think the running quarterback, you know, uh, with what Rich Rodriguez has done, but a multiple number of coaches around the country now have picked that up, uh, you know, and, and I think the, the, that added dimension of that athlete Back in that extra athlete back in the backfield is the next step. Michigan survived again today with their freshman quarterback. Valentine from the five. And flags fly in. 17 unanswered Notre Dame points. And the penalty on the kick return could set Purdue in a little bit of a hole again. During the return. Holding. On the return team. Number three. Ten yard penalty. First down. That's going to put Purdue inside its own 10. Probably. Let's check in right now with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Brev. Washington riding high after beating SC last week. Opening kickoff against Stanford. Here is Chris Owusu, the nation's leading kickoff returner. Returns his sixth kickoff of the season. I mean, sixth time he's touched it. Third time he's housed it. All the way back. 7-0 Cardinal on top early. Wow. It's crazy. You never know week to week. That's for sure. Florida State found that out today. Cal found that out today. Miami found that out today. Here's Purdue. The throw completes out to the 19-yard line. Pickup of about five to the tight end, Kyle Adams. I was going to ask you, Joe, do you have Drew Brees on your fantasy team? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't play that fantasy stuff. You know, I kind of like the real stuff, but uh, Drew's having a great year again. You know, uh, really most accurate passer I've ever been around in all my my years of coaching and a great young guy. I know you're proud of all your former players and you said you've been picking some games out here and there or the pros. 
As here, the pass is complete again to the tight end. It's going to be good enough for a first down after the 26 yard line and a first down. Well, you talk about Drew Brees. How about 99? I think you probably remember this one, Joe. Drew was just a little bit warm. 24 out of 40, not including the touchdown run. 317 yards. Nice pump fake. And the throw to the corner for the touchdown, and Purdue wins 26-22. Not a bad day, huh? Uh, he had a lot of good days for us. That was good for me. <laughs> Here's first down for Joey Elliott. Rolling and trying to throw this one on the near sideline. Well, Coach, uh, we know you want to go have some fun. I know you got more football to watch with the Patriots and the Broncos, and I yeah. know you and Arnett want to have some fun with uh, some old friends. Is my, is my room still ready out there so I can come fishing? Absolutely. Uh, you know the coffee pots on. You know I, I made a I made a comment last game of the <laughs> season uh, to the fans. You know we're listed in the phone book. So far we've had six <laughs> Purdue couples stop in and see us, and seven students stay overnight. That's, <laughs> that's beautiful. I don't so, take up much room. Keep the trot screen cold uh, for me. All right. Thank Thanks, you. coach. Thank you, Joe Good Siller. Good one to of the see greats you, and uh, winning his coach in Purdue history. Down the seam, almost a big play. Could have been a touchdown. Intended for Keith Smith. Joey Elliott knows it too. So Keith Smith had everybody down the middle, and Joey would love to have another shot at that one. And Joey Elliott just needs to kind of settle back into this game. I mean, the Notre Dame has kind of been on a roll here. They've gotten the, gotten the lead, but Purdue still has enough weapons to, to make plays against this defense, but Joey Elliott just has got to calm it down a little bit. Here comes a pass rush. Elliott's going to try to keep it, and he's cut down by Darius Fleming. Brian Smith, the outside linebacker. Elliott on the keeper. And again, it's a little different philosophy. We've we've seen a different style of the Notre Dame offense. It's been a different style of the Notre Dame defense too. Not as much blitz as typical, but then when he starts to leave the pocket, Joey Elliott, then they fly at him and they've made plays that way. Summers probably hit this one a mile in the air. Tate will backpedal to the 20. The bad news is he's got a return on and Golden Tate. Lasso down at the 36 yard line. 54 yard kick. It's been all Notre Dame for the last few drives. 17 to 7. Clausen on deck. Brad. All right, race we'll see you in about two minutes, 48 seconds. Notre Dame now with Jimmy Clausen back at the controls, and they come up firing after. A whole bunch of runs that got him a couple of touchdowns. Well, they went 13 straight runs when Dane Christ was in. Jimmy Clausen, when he was in the game, didn't look totally himself. A little bit off. Again, that right foot is plant foot. That's where the toe injury is. He was able to move out of the pocket fairly well, but you can tell it just is not a, a real comfortable thing for him. But the reason he's in right now again is to run the two-minute offense. Which has 217 remaining and two timeouts. Here's a quick toss after Kamaran. He's out to the 40 yard line. Torrey Williams made the tackle. Well, we got a little over two minutes remaining. Notre Dame, two timeouts. And they do have a third down coming up. Third down in about six. And Purdue's going to take a timeout. We'll take it as well. 209 remaining till halftime. Notre Dame looking for more points. Purdue looking for a stop. The way I see it, all synthetic oils are the same. We showed you that whole cradle of quarterbacks a little while ago. Could it be one of them? Or could it be somebody else? Think it over. Jimmy Clausen, Notre Dame's quarterback, in the gun. On third down. And a long five. Lawson throws off its back foot and it's batted down. Joe Holland got in there. Don Landholm, the defensive coordinator, dialed up a blitz that time, thinking, you know what, this quarterback can't get away from pressure if we get somebody right up the middle. They had two linebackers coming right at him, and Holland able to get his hands on the football and a good stop for Purdue on third down. 
So Purdue's going to have two timeouts in over two minutes with which to work following the punt. First punt for Notre Dame tonight. Short and taken on a hop at the 30 by Valentine. Valentine all the way to the 42 yard line. You know, you can tell that this guy wants to make plays. I mean, that's part of why he had the fumbles last week after the 62-yard return for a touchdown. But this is such a heads-up play on the short kick. Everybody from Notre Dame is assuming that he's just going to let it bounce because it was short. He catches it on the run and advances the football well up the field. 32-yard punt and a 30-yard return. And as Dodd said, he took 162 to the house last week before some bobbles, but now he's given his team a chance offensively. At the 43 at Notre Dame, first down Purdue with 154 till halftime. Elliott flushed again as a flag down, the pass is incomplete. <laughs> Pressure coming from Ethan Johnson that time. Holding offense with a 54, 10-yard penalty, first down. Take this you was, back to last week. Yeah, Valentine, the, the first touchdown of the game was on this 62-yard nifty punt return by Valentine. It got Purdue off to the start, a 7-0 lead. But the next two punts that he had come to him, he dropped and gave Northern Illinois the football in Purdue territory. He ultimately, uh, Danny Hope took him out for the rest of the game as a punt returner, but he's back in there again tonight. I told you earlier, impact player one way or the other. So far, it's been positive tonight. Elliott throws on the run and throws a strike to Keith Smith. One thing I think Purdue needs to try to do Maybe in this drive and for sure in the second half is they need to try to throw the ball down the field and stretch this Notre Dame defense a little bit. Everything is kind of short crossing intermediate stuff and it feels like the Notre Dame defense is really kind of just sitting on the routes. I think they got to try to get somebody behind the defense and at least try to threaten down the field. Second down of seven that's Smith in motion. Elliott draw play. To Bolden and Bolden got about five to the 36 but we're down to 136 remaining in the half again Purdue as you see up there on the top of your screen two timeouts <laughs> Purdue's got an excellent field goal kicker that has long range in his leg but they would like to keep this going and maybe get a touchdown Smith goes way out to the top of your screen Elliott's looking that way, going to him far side, incomplete. This is incomplete. Coverage by Gary Gray over there. Yeah, I, I think they needed to do that, but third and three is not where you take that chance. You take that chance on first or second down because you really needed to convert here. And that's fourth down, and at the 36-yard line, they've got a kicker that's got plenty of legs, but they're going to yeah. go for it. Well, this is something Joe Tiller probably do. And Danny Hope says, I'm going to hope for this three yards. Unless they try to draw him offside. Nope, they're going to take the snap. Elliott over the middle and incomplete. Well, they blew an opportunity there to at least get an attempt at three points. He was open. No, oh, he was wide open because it looked like he was going to block. And then they slipped Bolden out. And the ball was kind of thrown on his back shoulder. I mean, this was a perfectly designed play because Notre Dame blitzed the linebacker, assuming Bolden was staying in the block, so there was nobody there to pick him up. But it was not a good throw by Joey Elliott. So a wasted opportunity, without a doubt, for Purdue. With a minute three remaining, Jimmy Clausen and a quarterback again. He pumps to the middle and throws to the flat to his tight end, Rudolph, and Rudolph on the run. Rudolph's got a first down, and he's out of bounds in Purdue territory. 
So we knew that was going to happen eventually. He was going to find big number nine, and I mean big. Todd said it earlier, 6'6", 260-pounder. He picked up 17 yards. Yeah, he was a great prospect out of Cincinnati Elder High School. Just great football down in the Cincinnati area. A couple, about Game six parochial schools down there that all play outstanding high school Wolf football, and Notre Dame has recruited all of First them very well. And Kyle Rudolph has a bright, bright future. Rudolph now standing up in a slot to the left side as the extra receiver on first down at the Boilermaker 48. Purdue needs to prevent any further bleeding here before halftime. Crossing hit in the backfield again. Now running, not what they want to happen. And he gets up sort of on his left foot and walks back to the huddle. So he's all right. Brought down by Tory Williams. We got a timeout. Notre Dame leading in the late stages of the second quarter here at Ross Age Stadium. Yards in a game by a quarterback. All those guys we looked at. Gary Danielson at 72, 213 yards on the ground. GD won't walk 213 yards on a golf course. 13. Yeah, he was running a wishbone back then. He wouldn't walk that far on a golf course today, I don't think. <laughs> second and 10. Clawson loads and fires. Strike to the freshman Shaq Evans. We talked about him earlier, a guy that Charlie Weiss said with the speed he's got, maybe he can be the equalizer on one side with Golden Tate on the other. They move the sticks. Stop the clock momentarily with the first down. Now it starts again with 33 ticks left till halftime. Boston is gonna throw this one away. Wait for another play. Clawson's pass is incomplete. Well, you knew that Jimmy Clawson's statistics probably couldn't keep up the way they had right. been, whether he was healthy or not, because he's just been ripping things up. He had nine touchdown passes coming in and no interceptions. Tonight, he's eight out of 15. Well, he came in the second most efficient quarterback in college football, and uh, he's just, right now, he's just managing the game. He's yeah. playing with one bad leg. He, in that throw right there, he says, you know, I'm not going to make a mistake here. I'm not going to put my team in a bad position. If it's not there, I'll throw it away. Try to hit a couple more passes here and see if we can set up for three more points before halftime. Think about all the Notre Dame quarterbacks and the fact that that is a school record four straight 300-yard passing games. And that's what he's done dating back to the bowl game against Hawaii at the end of last year. Reminder, overall points leader Mark Martin racing for his sixth victory of the season. Jimmy Johnson's on a pull. Denny Hamlin right there on his heels, too. Chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Dover tomorrow. One o'clock on ABC. Presented by Burger King. There's your top point leaders. Mark Martin. I took him last week. Remember I said I like yeah. the old guys. He went out and won. Got to love him. Here we've got 24 seconds remaining in the first half. Notre Dame by 10, 17 unanswered points. They did a lot of it with the running game. Golden Tate playing in the Wildcat. Dane Chris being in at quarterback. But that's Jimmy Clausen's turn, as Todd said in the two-minute offense. Throwing deep for the end zone, and it is intercepted. Picked off by David Pinder. Somebody got a hand yeah, on it's Clawson exactly right. in the backfield. Yeah, Ryan Kerrigan was rushing the quarterback, and it looked like he kind of knocked the ball out of his hands for an instant right here, and then he gets it back and reloads, but by that time, the coverage had caught up and right there to make the interception. And again, the difference between Golden Tate or Michael Floyd going up for that ball and Sheck Evans, the freshman, just not ready to kind of fight for that ball with the same kind of strength. So there's the first interception and 148 pass attempts going back to the USC game in late November of last year. We had just said no interceptions this year. Came in with a long string, but uh, that string is over. And now Purdue runs it out to the 35-yard line. And they're going to hurry up here and take a timeout with 12 seconds left. So Joey Elliott got it out his offense to the 35-yard line, and they might try to loft one down here. 12 seconds all that remains in the first half. So Purdue, no further damage done. 
by the Notre Dame offense. Let's take a look at tonight's Good Hands flashback brought to you by Allstate. Take you back to October of 05. Jeff Samarja, all 6'6 of a great wide receiver. Some beautiful catches in the matchup against Purdue. Another look at another angle. You can't do it much better than that. The final was Notre Dame over Purdue 49 to 28. And Charlie says he never hears from Samarja without him busting his chops about baseball or about how <laughs> Notre Dame is doing. Here we're down to 12 seconds. Purdue still has one timeout left. And they do have a kicker that has a huge leg. If they can get a couple completions. Elliott's going to throw behind his intended receiver again. That's been a little bit of a problem tonight. Valentine was the guy who was trying to get it to. And now we're down to eight seconds remaining. So they would really have to load one up. I don't even know if they have enough time to get one down the seam and get a timeout call. Well, the good news for Purdue is last week they were down 21-7 at halftime to Northern Illinois, and they weren't quite sure how to handle it. Well, they, they've been through that. Now. So you hope from a maturity standpoint, and Joey Elliott, they can go in and regroup at halftime and realize that this game is still very much in reach. Down 10 to Notre Dame, knowing that Jimmy Clausen is not 100%. So now we're down to no timeouts remaining and one play left, barring a defensive penalty here. It's time for a Myers scoring drive. It's almost as if Joey Elliott just instinctively called that yeah. one timeout, and maybe the coaches weren't thinking about that. Maybe just thinking about, let's go to the locker room at halftime and we'll. Yeah. Regroup a little bit. <laughs> when they ran the ball, that's what I thought they were doing. Just yeah. going to go in there and regroup and figure out what they needed to do it to attack. But with the timeout called, now I guess you you take one shot at a Hail Mary or some kind of a long play. They did run a trick play for a, a late touchdown against Oregon so on a fourth down, but it was in the red zone. It wasn't a long throw. It was from about the 15-yard line. Well, they bring the trips down to the bottom of your screen, the three wideouts. Joey Elliott may not get the pass off. Yeah, he does. He steps up and he goes deep and he's got Valentine out there. And he almost got a hand on it. But that brings the half to a close. So Purdue had the first touchdown of the ball game. Took it right down the field, but they've given up 17 straight. Let's check in with Eric. Well, Coach, I know Jimmy Clausen not happy with that interception, but how do you think he's dealing with the turf toe? Oh, he's done He's done a nice job. As a matter of fact, he's had got flushed out of the pocket a few times. He's, what he was annoyed about is that we were close to field goal range, and if we were just throwing a check down, we could have gotten three points out of that instead of throwing the ball, you know, throwing the ball deep in the end zone. Coach, what will your plan be for the second half with your quarterbacks? Well, <laughs> you think I would tell you that? <laughs> I still have to ask you, Coach. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> what about Dane Chris? How do you think he played in the first half? Oh, so far, so good. You know, uh, you know, I'm going to be using both of them in the second half too. You told me, by the way. Thanks, Joey. <laughs> Brad. Only Aaron knows. Coming up, <laughs> it's a halftime report brought to you by Wendy's. Reese, Mark, and the guys with all the scores and highlights. Up next, Bells. Fighting Irish of Notre Dame leading the Boilermakers of Purdue 17 to 7 as we head into the third quarter with Todd Blackledge and Aaron Andrews. I'm Brad Nessler. Notre Dame gets the ball first after deferring on the coin toss in the first half. So Carson Wiggs to kick. Barry Gallup and Theo Riddick are back deep for the Fighting Irish. And the kick will go down to the five-yard line to Riddick. Riddick hit at the 20 and cartwheels his way out to about the 22-yard line. So that is where Notre Dame's going to go to work. And Todd, I was just going to say, who do you start? Yeah. We know now because we can see him coming up. Well, and I think it makes perfect sense for Dane Chris to come back out. I mean, here's the bottom line. Notre Dame ran for 138 yards in the first half. They averaged over six yards every time they carried the right. football. So the challenge for Purdue, can they stand up to the running game? That's when Notre Dame made their noise, put the points on the board, was just power running the football, a mixture of Chris at quarterback and Golden Tate in the Wildcat formation. So here's Chris, only 0 for 1, only threw it once. 
And they keep it on the ground again. Remember, they went 14 straight runs to get 17 unanswered points. Pick up a two, we pick up Aaron on the field. Aaron. Brad, I asked Purdue head coach Danny Hope about, you know, what adjustments need to be made with Dayton Christ out there and also the Wildcat. And he said simply nothing. We stick to our game plan. The biggest problem defensively is that we need to make some tackles, something he felt wasn't done in the first half. Guys, I have to tell you, when Dayton Christ was out here just warming up, throwing to the receivers, one of his guys said, man, you got some zip to that ball tonight. So Chris feeling good here in the second half. He can definitely throw it. They'll keep it on the ground, though, because they're not stopping it. And there's exactly what Aaron's talking about. If you're not going to bring down Jonas Gray or Robert Hughes or maybe Golden Tate in the Wildcat, we'll just keep giving it to him. Well, those are Jimmy's numbers and, and, and un-Jimmy-like through the first three games of this year. I mean, he coming into tonight's game has been flawless. I mean, 14 touchdowns, no interceptions in his last four games. Coming into tonight, he threw the one interception late in the first half. But uh, again, just not on his game because of the foot. And this is a, a really smart decision, I think, by Charlie Weiss to go with this style. Quarterback keeper, and it's an easy first down. For Christ on a third and one, got about four. So this is what they did in the second quarter when they took it down the field, had long yep. scoring drives, 62-yarder in seven plays, about four minutes there, and a 73-yarder in nine plays. The veteran offensive line, all right? You've got four seniors and a sophomore up there. Trevor Robinson, the right guard, is the only underclassman. And, and they're controlling the action right now for Notre Dame. The one thing I think we will see, though, is a play-action pass and Dane Chris trying to throw a deep one down the field in this drive. There's a quick toss out in the flat. Golden Tate. So there's the first completion for Dane Chris tonight. Golden Tate, a big smile on his face as if to say, okay, now we got the kid throwing and running. <laughs> and, of course, Golden's done a little bit of everything tonight. Well, what's that thing that the uh, Purdue uh, student section says, boiler up? Yep. Well, that's what this defense has to do. Boiler up, beef up, man up, whatever it is, because they've got to do a better job stopping the Notre Dame running game if they hope to have a chance to win this game in the second half. they got to do something for Notre Dame to give it up. And again, it's Tate's. He's got the first down. Boy, that's worked really well. We talked about Armando Allen had been running that, but uh, Golden Tate is doing as good a job if not better. The reason it's so difficult to stop and why so many teams are using this version of, of an offense, even in the NFL, is because it's an extra running threat and you're able to get an extra blocker and, and the defenses can't account for that one more guy. It's just... Uh, it's very difficult, and you got a guy as talented as a runner as Golden Tate. Makes it even more difficult. Chris now a wide receiver as Tate fakes it. Comes back to the left side. And Falls gets on down the ground. To the 46 wow. yard line. Oh. The a penalty marker down on the far side. Golden Tate's a leading rusher in the ball game. Legal formation. Offense, number 18. Five yard penalty. First down. That can happen at times when you don't have a regular quarterback in there and you're doing a lot of different things. The thing I like about Jimmy Clausen and all this, though, he's encouraging Dave yeah. Christ. He's patting the offensive lineman on the head. He's staying right involved. He's looking over Charlie's shoulders, see what the play call is. I mean, he is still the leader of this team, even though he's not on the field right now. That's Chris under center on a first and 15. Gray and Jonas Gray's done a nice job tonight. Picks up six more back to the 50. When you average six yards or more every time you carry the football, what? You don't need to do anything no. different. Until Purdue can prove that you can't do that anymore, I wouldn't do anything else. I, mean, I would just keep pounding and see what Purdue does in response. Five runs and one pass so far in this drive again. Very similar to what they did when they scored last time. Here's a toss to Gray. Try to cut it back, and finally the Boilermakers do make a stop for no game. Now Golden Tate, when you got a name like Golden, out of Hendersonville, Tennessee, he's living up to the billing. Tough catch on the sideline, and that play in tailback. 
the last year when Michael Floyd had a knee injury and went out for a couple games. Everybody expected Golden Tate's production to really go up, but it didn't. It actually went down a little bit, and, and he really made a decision this year that when this happened again with Michael Floyd, he wasn't going to have the same thing happen. He was going to pick up his game. This time, they're waiting for him. Jason Warner. Warner, the linebacker, has had back problems and back surgeries. A tough kid out of Greenwood, Indiana. Always wanted to play at Purdue. We talked to him yesterday, and he was fired up for this game against a longtime rival. And they did boil her up, yep. just like Todd said they would. Forcing a punt. Eric Boston, punt formation for Notre Dame. Eric Maus to kick. There's Aaron Valentine. Remember, he's kind of a wild card back there. He could take it the distance. He could drop it. He could do a lot of things. In this case, on the fly, he takes it. 25, 30, 35. Got about 16 on the return again. He's got guts. I'll give him yeah. that. He is fearless. There's no question about that. Tailgating week. Presented by Kingston Charcoal. First down after the punt return, just outside the 36-yard line. Joey Elliott rolls and throws and's got a man, and it's complete. And another first down to Keith Smith as we go to Reese Davis. All right, Brad, Washington and Stanford has been back and forth. Toby Gerrard had ripped off a 60-yard touchdown run, but Jake Locker, who hooked up with Jermaine Curse a couple times in that game-winning drive against SC last week, a touchdown. Curse is first since the Stanford game last year. 17-14 Cardinal. Good one there in the Pac-10. Here it's Purdue starting their Big Ten season next week against their longtime rivals. From South Bend, and Elliott goes down. First sack of the Knights. Darius Fleming has had a nice game at outside linebacker. And that's a play where I think Joey Elliott, again, he's not a young guy. He's a, he's a senior, but he stumbled on the way out. This is one that doesn't look too good. Throw the thing away, you know? I mean, because you get momentum on the completion, and then you take the sack, and now you're second and really long. Go ahead and throw it away. Sometimes the defense wins, and even though he's not young, he is a new starting quarterback for Purdue. Now faces second down at 16. Pumps once. Ooh, dangerous. The pump, nobody bid on that, except uh, Robert Blanton didn't for sure and almost took that one the other way. And again, I think the Notre Dame defense is just dialed into the passing game of Purdue. They're just squatting and sitting on all the routes because everything has been short. Nothing has threatened or stretched the Notre Dame defense down the field. And so consequently, these corners and uh, coverage guys are sitting on it. Well, they started off perfect on third down conversions. They haven't had one since. And this is a big one. Third and 16. Got to get it all the way down to the 38-yard line. Here comes a corner blitz. Elliott does throw out incomplete intended for Keith Carlos. Todd, you mentioned how Notre Dame's defense seems so dialed in all week long. Charlie Weiss wanted them to work on building their confidence, their confidence in themselves, so they wouldn't play hesitant out there. They would just go out here tonight and let it loose. Seems like that's what they're doing. Yeah, and I think they're playing much better than they have earlier in the season. They're not blitzing maybe as much as they did the first three games. More timely blitzing, but uh, doing a nice job right now. Summers, high punt, Golden Tates will take it at about the 17-yard line. When we come back, we've got another installment of Todd's Taste of the Town. Looks looks a little Italian to me. The Hall of Engineering, Purdue's had more astronauts than uh, pretty much any other school in the country. They've got the, the long striding footprints of uh, being on the moon. Those three guys are three high steppers too, and none of them are playing. Armando Allen, James Aldridge, Michael Floyd, all out of the Notre Dame lineup. And Dane Chris in at quarterback for Jimmy Clausen, who has played some tonight, but Chris has actually played more. Yeah, I like the response by Purdue right now because they realize, okay, look, 
they, they challenged our manhood in the first half running the football. So we, we couldn't stop it in the base defense. So we've got to crowd the line of scrimmage, get extra bodies up there, and now try to put the ball in Dane Chris's hands and say, if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to beat us throwing the football. He's one out of two. And he will throw here. Maybe. Completes it to the 25, but it's short of the first down. Pickup of about five. Got it to Robert Hughes out of the backfield. Let's check in with Aaron. And Brad, right now, this is what Purdue's defense was stressing over on the sidelines before they took the field. Get off the field on third down. We're two of seven on third down. You got to get off. And that's what Don Landholm was telling us this week. That was the problem last week against Northern Illinois. Can they get off the field on third down and two here? Berger is back in the backfield with Hughes. It'll be Hughes. And he's got the first down. Close to the 30-yard line. Hughes, a bigger guy, gives you a little different, uh, a different look or a different weight, 235-pounder. We know that it's eating at Armando Allen that he wasn't able to go tonight. But if they win the game and they keep him on the sideline the whole yeah. time, that's going to set them up for five games. Five of them that are considered home games, though they do play one in San Antonio. Chris, high snap, gives it on Tate on the end around as flags go down, and Tate goes down at the 34-yard line. Chris Carlino, the linebacker, made the stop. Again, penalty markers down. Illegal formation. Offense. Number 18. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's the second time in this quarter, and it's the same guy. Monday Night Football. It's the Cowboys in their beautiful new home against the Carolina Panthers. Monday night, 8.30 Eastern time. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown. Served by Applebee's at 7 o'clock. Eastern. So the line of scrimmage back to the 24. Seven straight runs by Notre Dame overall here. The penalty is what helped Purdue stop them the last time they were on the field. They got another situation first down and 15. Camaro again in motion. The draw play to Hughes. Collins trying to wrap him up and does. And a pickup of about five. They got the penalty back, basically, as we're under six minutes here in the third quarter. See, that, that penalty is huge because you gain five yards, which is a good run, but now it's second and ten instead of second and five. And so it's just a, it plays into the hands of the defense. In both possessions here, Notre Dame had one of those penalties that set him back. So Jimmy Clausen in the first quarter, a lot of rushing in the second quarter. Here in the third quarter, they're trying, but as Todd said, Purdue equal to the task here in the last couple of series. See if they put it up. They will to the tight end, Rudolph. Rudolph got to the stick and got a first down. Such a weapon to have a guy like that that is that big and can run that well. Run, he's versatile. You can move him around. You can flank him out as a wide receiver. He comes off the line on this bootleg. Nice job of Dane Chris making the play fake and then finding his tight end. So first down here at the 41. Five minutes in the third quarter. Notre Dame leading Purdue by 10. Hughes again is a single setback. He'll get the handoff, and Hughes is out. Chews up five more yards. Speaking of chewing, it's time for Todd's Taste of the Town. In 1951, Bruno Eaton, a baker by trade, emigrated to Indiana from Switzerland. He started out working in a couple restaurants in South Bend and Gary before moving to West Lafayette and opening his own place, Bruno's Pizza, and he's been going strong ever since. Now, Bruno has since passed away, but the family tradition lives on as the place is now run by his two sons, Orlando and Bruno, and his daughter, Tina. We'll check at what Todd ate after this play, an incomplete pass. 
I tell you what, I, I got to quit going with you. Here's what he had. Through the years, the menu has really expanded, but one signature item has remained. Bruno's famous pizza dough is cut into pieces, deep fried, brushed with garlic butter, and then sprinkled with Parmesan cheese, and then served with either cheese or marinara sauce for dipping. Mm. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are unbelievable. They are addictive. They really are. are. Third down and six. This would be a big stop for Purdue again if they can come up with one. Christ, here comes a blitz. Notre Dame picks it up. He finds his tight end on the run. It's going to be a first down to Bobby Berger. That's the only thing that Todd didn't eat when he went out last night was a burger. Well, you know, and that's the thing that Danny Hope told Aaron at halftime. We got to do a better job of tackling. This just should have been stopped. David Pender, number nine, right here. Make the tackle. You make him punt. You come up and just throw a shoulder at him and don't wrap up the legs. He breaks an arm tackle and makes another first down, and you're back on the field. You don't get off the field on third down. And now you're in Purdue territory. They got eight yards on third down and six. And they got a bunch more right here. Going to be another first down to Golden Tate. Golden Tate kind of sprinkled with gold and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. <laughs> and he's bouncing around oh, out there. Man. <laughs> Those things were good, weren't they? They were unbelievable. Yeah, the thing about it is that they were kind of a combination between garlic toast. And donut holes. And donut holes. That's, That's what exactly. And just kind of just popping them in there. And, uh, I like how you could, you know, you had your own. So he could like double dip. You're not supposed to do that. Like yeah. Aaron and I were cutting ours because yeah. I didn't want to go. Yeah, marinara double dip cheese. All the way. That's probably not good, but <laughs> anyway, they, those were good. Yeah. And the pizza was great. That yeah, was. It was really a good place. And this time, Tate's going to be stretched out and knocked out of bounds. By the way, if you want to win a $100 gift certificate to Bruno's, log on to ESPN.com, search Taste of the Town, and tell us why you deserve to win. And thanks to Bruno and uh, Big O and uh, the whole group, Tina. We had a great time. I definitely got to quit going out with you to eat. <laughs> You, know, you can go out. You just got to get on that treadmill. But the treadmill would be the next day. Work. That's all. <laughs> Sometimes treadmill can't overcome those things. <laughs> well, Notre Dame has had the ball almost the entire quarter. The 11th play of this drive is coming up. And a second down at the 34. Christ. This was a on the run, run, and he threw it right at the end as Kerrigan was bringing him down. And the question was, did the ball get past the line of scrimmage? I mean, you can throw it away if you leave the pocket, but it also has to cross the line of scrimmage if you throw it away. That was awful close. It sure was. It was a busted play. Watch, Chris is going to go to fake. There's no one to fake. And now he's kind of out here on an island by himself. And does the ball cross the line of scrimmage? He's got a tight end right there as he throws it. Oh, it landed right on the line, it looked like, the way we looked at it at the 34-yard line. Well, here's another third down situation for Purdue. This is when they'd love to have Jimmy Clausen in. They keep it on the ground. Robert Hughes, Albert Evans makes a stop, really, with no game. And it's fourth down. It's a tough decision for Charlie Weiss. Probably a little bit too far for the field goal. Yep. You go for it. Maybe if Jimmy Clausen's in and you're throwing the football on fourth and ten, I don't know what you do with Dane Christ on fourth and ten. A little bit too far out of Tasha's range, according to his head coach. Yep. It's no man's land, really, at the 34-yard line. It'd yep. be about a 52-yard field goal attempt. And what Charlie's doing right now is milking the clock. We saw the time of possession. Purdue's had the ball for a minute and change. Yeah. They can't get the ball. They can't get off the field. So Charlie's just using as much as he can. And now Notre Dame takes a timeout. Timeout, Notre Dame, 2.07 to go third quarter. They've got a 10-point lead, and they've got a fourth down and 10 decision to make when we come back. Well, Blair Walsh might have a crack at it for Georgia here. Notre Dame's got a fourth. And ten. Golden Tate down at the bottom. Chris, five out of eight so far throwing. He won't get a chance. Ryan Kerrigan with a sack. Big, big play by the Purdue defense. Well, they had to get a stop. I mean, they, they just had to. They weren't able to get off the field. Their offense hasn't had the ball at all in this third quarter. 
Well, they get a stop here. And not only do they get the stop with the sack by Kerrigan as he comes right around Sam Young, the best offensive lineman on this Notre Dame team, they get out there and they get good field position for the Purdue offense. Kerrigan got that bobble when he hit yep. uh, Jimmy Clausen's arm earlier that led to the interception. Now the sack, so two big plays by Kerrigan. Here's a little slip screen to Smith. Keith Smith on his feet all the way down to the 31 yard line. Boy, that's nice. That's nice work by Keith Smith because you know what he did? He didn't dance. He tried to try to juke. He went north and south. As soon as he caught that ball, he just turned north and just kept running. And, and nobody brought him down. And he just kept going. Take that's... a look at him right up the field. 6'2, 226 pounds. That's a little dash of Joe Tiller yep. right there. Seven catches for Smith for 104 yards. Now on the ground, Ralph Bolden. He's been unable really to snap one out. He had one longer run earlier in the ball game, but they've held him pretty much in check. And now 1:25 on the clock running. Bolden's got 48 yards on 10 carries. And there you see, as Todd mentioned earlier, Jimmy Clausen. You think he's still not into it? Oh yeah. He's Rob Paulus is over there too. So you got really two quarterback coaches: the current quarterback and one of the best ones Notre Dame's had. Second and seven. Nice play fake by Elliott. He got right into a rush though, and he had to rush the throw. Well, what a play by Kyle McCarthy too. From his free safety position, he's got man responsibilities on the tight end with the blitz and he just makes a sure tackle. We've seen Purdue miss some tackles in the open field. Kyle McCarthy doesn't miss many tackles for Notre Dame. That's for sure. Last year he became the first defensive back in Notre Dame history to record over 100 tackles, had 110 tackles. He was a very good high school quarterback, Youngstown Cardinal Mooney, and uh, led his team to, uh, to the state finals. Guy that's had a heck of a game at linebacker for Notre Dame. Darius Fleming is the injured Irish player. And looks to be okay. So now a big, big third down for Purdue here in the final minute of the third quarter. They have missed their last seven third downs. That's not good. That's after starting three for three at the beginning of the ball game, which was basically their opening drive that was 80 yards for their lead of seven to nothing. But it's 17 unanswered by Notre Dame since then. The receivers all bunched to Joey Elliott's left. That's where he goes. Smith's got it. First down, Purdue down to the 13-yard line. Two really nice things on this play for Purdue. Number one, Ralph Bolden in pass protection, getting a key block on the edge. And then again, Keith Smith. Now watch Bolden come over here and get a block. And after that, watch Keith Smith know where Blanton is when he catches it. If he keeps running this to the outside, he gets tackled for a loss. He, he feels him. He cuts back inside right past the first down marker. Very instinctive play by Keith Smith. May not get this playoff. They will to end the quarter. And it's maybe a loss of one by Ralph Bolden. The third quarter comes to a close. But for Purdue fans and their home stadium, there is hope. The Irish lead by 10. The Boilermakers are driving. We'll see how they do to start the fourth quarter when we come back. The Ross Aid Stadium crowd, it's time to shout. And they responded pretty well. His wife waving the Purdue flag. So now all the excitement and the dancing and shouting and jumping around becomes the fourth quarter. With Todd Blackledge and Aaron Andrews, Brad Nessler in West Lafayette, where Purdue's got something working here. They only had nine plays of offense in the third quarter. As we start the fourth, they're only trailing by 10. Elliott wants to throw back the other way and does. 
in and out of the hands of Kyle Adams. Well designed play, but Adams lost his footing, and again, the pass was a little bit off. Well, and Gary Gray was right there. An extra defensive back in the game for Notre Dame at that point, and was right there. Was not fooled by the quarterback going away. Stayed at home and picked up the tight end nicely. You've got to keep an eye on where Keith Smith is, and at this point, he's down to the left of Joey Elliott. He's been the big play receiver. He's in motion. Third down and 11. Elliott fires far side. Smith out of bounds at the one. Well, what a throw by Joey Elliott. When you roll out, you, you eliminate half the field. You can only go one place, and he puts it right on the outside away from the defender. And Smith shows you his strength after the catch. Watch his throw right on the outside. And a beautiful job working the sideline by Keith Smith. Purdue is one yard away from a touchdown. There's the numbers on Keith Smith. It's under further review. So they're going to take a look at this one. Pat Garvey, the referee, will come over to look. We'll take a look as we go to break. Looked like he had it. They'll make sure during this timeout. The play on the field, as it was called, stands. So Smith with the reception out at the one-yard line. And it's first and goal, Purdue. Down 10, trying to cut into that right here in the early stages of the fourth quarter. Jared Crank will be the fullback in the eye, and Bowling gets the call, and he is stoned for a loss of about two. That was a great play by Ian Williams, number 95. He's the guy who got low penetration into the backfield and wrapped up the legs of Bolden. Watch down low. He got on all fours and just crawled into the backfield and then wrapped up the right leg of Bolden. And he lost two yards. Now you got to think, do you wait one more or do you think about play action? Second and goal at the three. Elliott pulls up, had it tipped, incomplete. Had two tight ends out there, but somebody got a hand on it. Now you got third and goal. Well, it looked like he was going to try to take off and run to the corner and then realize he wasn't going to get there. And so he tried to throw it back to his short tight end, Kyle Adams. Probably had a better shot at Jeff Lindsay in the back corner of the end zone. Third and goal, Purdue. Back to back, excellent defensive plays by John Tenuta's group here down at the goal line. At the three. Now the tight end, Adams is in a slot to the right side, and it's Elliott in the shotgun. The throw at the goal line, Smith's got it, touchdown. Wow. What a night for Key Smith, regardless of the outcome of this game. We have a ball game in West Lafayette. Carson Wiggs in for the point after. Snap is bobbled. He just barely had enough time to get it inside the right upright. Purdue scores here in the fourth. Elliott to Smith as it's been all night. Notre Dame 17, Purdue 14. Quick slant. What I want you to watch, Kyle McCarthy, the leader of this Notre Dame defense, is going to guess it. He's just a hair late in getting there. And somehow, Joey Elliott able to slip that ball right in between the two defenders for an all-important Purdue touchdown. 17-14, Notre Dame, Wiggs to kick. Gallup and Riddick wait. It'll be Riddick at the seven-yard line. Riddick going left all the way. 
And they're going to bottle him up finally as he got about to the 32 yard line. And we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, guys. Sports Center right now. A game going on on ABC. We'll get you up to date on that in a moment. Tim Tebow was knocked out of Florida's game against Kentucky. He's being checked out in a hospital. Gators won it 41 to 7. We'll have an update on college football final coming up after Sports Center tonight. And then the Penn State Iowa game, as mentioned, Iowa just blocked a punt for Penn State. Adrian Claiborne, scoop, score, and the Hawkeyes up 11 10. Shades of 08. Chris, deep ball, had a man, and the defender had fallen down, but it was too far in front of Golden Tate's. Brandon King. Remember, he's been suffering from a thigh bruise, missed the last two games. I don't know if this is a cramp or if he's re-injured his thigh. Kind of thought we would see this, a play action, try to throw deep to one of these fast receivers, and feet got tangled up, and uh, Golden Tate was running alone, but the ball just overthrown by Chris. And King landed right on his thigh pad when he landed out there trying to... Uh, Run stride for stride with one of the faster guys in the country. Out of Warner Robins, Georgia, they're going to help him off. And then you have to look right away if it's Royce Adams or if it's Josh Johnson or who they bring in there because Notre Dame might want to pick on that spot. You know that guy's thinking that. Well, he's thinking that, but he's also thinking, I don't have my main gunslinger That's in there. Right. You know? yeah. I got my backup guy that... Uh, I know he's got the arm, but I'm not sure he'll make the throw I need. He'd like to have Matt Dillon out there. He's got Festus, yeah. you know? <laughs> I think he's a little quicker than Festus. Quicker than yeah. Festus. Yeah. Torrey Williams might go over and play that spot. The captain of the defense normally is safety. That's what they're going to do. Second down and 10. Golden Tate inside sweep. Purdue's waiting this time. Keon Brown and company are there. Well, Golden Tate has been able to get outside of this Purdue defense several times tonight. This is good leverage defense. Keep them inside of you. If you have outside, force them back in where there's more black shirts that can run to the football. That's a good job of keeping leverage, forcing him back inside, and all those Purdue defenders running to the football. Third down and 12, and all of a sudden, the Purdue crowd is alive. Chris got leveled by Gerald Gooden as he let go of the ball. Tried to set up a screen, but the pressure was so quick from Gooden that Chris was not able to get anything on the throw. Watch how quick the pressure is from the top of the screen. Right as Chris turns to throw the screen, he's got a man right in his face, and he throws a bad pass. And the whole feel of this second half has taken an about face because Purdue's going to get the ball back with 12 and a half to go, and they're only down a field goal. Nice punt. Valentine takes it and got peppered as he caught the ball and flags all over the place. Harrison Smith. Yep. Well, Notre Dame should have learned this already in the game. This guy doesn't call fair catches. I mean, he's going to try to return everything. So you've got to have discipline running down the field when this guy's under a punt because he is going to try to catch it and run. Kick catch interference. Kicking team number 22. 10 yard penalty. Correction. 15 yard penalty. First down. Here's another look. Well, I take it back. He did call a fair catch. Oh. But Harrison Smith way too close to him and hit him before the ball even got there. You got to let him have enough room yep. to catch the football. So a huge penalty. Now great field position for Purdue and all the time in the world for both teams. 12 and a half to play. Notre Dame leading by three. 
Smith, the starting safety out of Knoxville, Tennessee. There's the penalty situation. That was a big one. Here's Bowling. Oh, he almost snuck through there. Only got about two yards. And we take a look back at our Sears Drive recap. Christ pressured. Kerrigan got to him with a sack. And then Elliott on the slip screen to Keith Smith. And Smith just wouldn't give up. And finally he goes to him down to the one-yard line. And then he said, well, it's third goal at the three. I like it. I like number eight. I like aiming at those two circles on that eight. Yep. And it is second down and eight. Full and start. Offense, number 76, five-yard penalty, second down. That's Rick Schmieg with the false start. Wasn't much going on for Purdue in the previous seven drives. They went the whole third quarter with nine offensive snaps. And guess who's stretching and warming up? He's got his helmet on. Well, and I think he almost has to because momentum is changing in this game. And, and nothing against Dane Christ. I mean, he did what he was asked to do. But Purdue answered by stopping the run. And so now Notre Dame, when they get it, has to throw. Fake the end around and got it back to the original line of scrimmage, Bolden. You know, Charlie Weiss told us last night, we went over to their hotel, and he said, if, if we can control number 23, we'll have a good day on defense. Yeah. And, and they have. I mean, Ralph Bolden has not gotten loose on them. I think Purdue might need to counter by trying to throw the ball to him. I mean, they tried once, but get him out in space where he can catch it and run in space a little bit. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Ellington throws, caught, and a first down. Royce Adams. And he did a lot of that on his own after first contact. They got 11 on third and 10. Well, it's a quick screen. They let the pressure come in. One missed tackle, two missed tackles, three missed tackles, and a first down for Purdue. Boy, Adams did a nice job to put his hand down and keep his balance, or he'd have been dropped about three yards short of the first down. At the 44-yard line now, first and 10, Boilermakers. Got a full house backfield there, a little bit of option to Smith. And Smith. Inside the 40, hadn't seen that one yet tonight. As we check in with Reese Davis, Reese. Brad, another week, another thrilling finish for the Georgia Bulldogs against Arizona State, the Blair Walsh Project. And our Taco Bell studio update is Blair Walsh, as time expires, kicks the game-winning field goal. A.J. Green was spectacular. Eight catches, 174 yards, and a touchdown. He blocked the field goal, too. Well, the dogs survive between the hedges after putting 52 points up on Arkansas last week. Timeout taken by Notre Dame. That's their second. With just under 10 minutes to go, Purdue's going to have a second and four, trailing by three. Big fourth quarter still in front of us. Again, Hawkeyes by eight, guys. Well, last year at Kinnick Stadium, it was a field goal in the final seconds. Now it's... Penn State that's going to have to come back from eight down. Notre Dame still in front, but if Purdue scores, they'll have to come from down. Right now, it's the Boilermakers on second down and four. Flags are down. Bolden broke a tackle. Bolden, big gainer, but again, penalty markers at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, this one, I think, is going to come back. That was a, an illegal formation by Purdue. The, the receiver that went in motion started on the line of scrimmage and then backed up and went in motion. Legal formation. Offense, number 10. Five-yard penalty. Illegal motion on the line of scrimmage. Correction, illegal motion. Offense, number 10. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. There he is, Royce Adams. And he started on the line of scrimmage instead of off and then went in motion. Can't do that. It's about the fourth one of those we've seen tonight. Those type of plays, anyway. A couple against Notre Dame, a couple against uh, Purdue. Ten penalties on Purdue. That one happened to be on number ten. Second and nine. And we're nine and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. Now 
Elliott with three wide outs and his tight end in a slot and that flags again. They didn't get the playoff. This, this is play of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Having a penalty coming off a penalty is almost as bad as having a penalty coming out yeah. of a timeout. Well, you, you've got momentum, you hit some plays, you've got great field position, you've got the crowd back into it, and then you go backwards on two plays in a row for nothing more than just mental errors, not physical errors, mental errors. See if they can get any of it back. Second and 14. Elliott looks left, comes back to the middle, diving catch. And to the 36-yard line, Kyle Adams. Pretty good pocket presence this time by Joey Elliott. He had to move up in the pocket, but he kept his eyes downfield. Instead of just taking off and running, he waited for the last minute, saw an open receiver as tight end, and got him the football. And like you said, got a lot of it back to bring up a third and very manageable situation there. Two yards to go on third down. They've got to keep this drive moving. Field goal ties. Touchdown gets him in front. Bolden, he's been bottled up all night. They still got him. No game. Brian Smith, the outside linebacker, hanging on for dear life. A yeah, really nice tackle in space. Again, Bolden has vision, he has speed. McCarthy misses, but Brian Smith gets there to wrap him up. Todd, the second quarter, they were on the same spot going the other way, and they did not go for a field goal. And we know how long their field goal kicker can hit him. He's got a career long of 59. Here they go again on fourth down. Yep. The last time they did this, they tried to sneak Bolden through the line and throw him the ball, but it hit him in the shoulder pad. They're going to have to hustle just to get this one off. I don't like this. Rushing the play. Here comes the blitz. Elliott. The fade. It's intercepted by Darren Walls. That didn't look good from the get-go. No, you probably want to take a timeout there. They were late getting out of the huddle. They were late getting the play called. They rushed it, and then Joey Elliott rushed the throw and didn't get enough on it. He had his man. His man was open, but he just underthrew it. And Walls is there for the interception. His man is beat, but it's an underthrow, and it's a turnover. And now out comes number seven, Jimmy Clausen back in at quarterback. Notre Dame with seven and a half minutes to go, leads only by three. They've been unable to move it after Purdue has shut down their ground game, which is what they were doing for the most part with Dane Christ at quarterback. And now it's Clausen's game on a toss to Hughes. And again, Purdue does a pretty nice job after a pickup of three of bringing him down. And Purdue has done a much better job in the second half stopping the run. And, and even though Notre Dame has the lead still, the reason Clawson in now is because he's more of a throwing threat. It, it makes that Purdue defense play a little bit more honest. Second down and seven. Empty backfield. They bring an extra man, Werner, and he got him. Jason Werner, the outside linebacker. He timed it perfectly, yep. and he was unabated to the quarterback. Nobody picks him up. He jumps, and just Jimmy Clausen tries to duck under him and gets tripped up and comes up short. And another third down and long now for Jimmy Clausen and Notre Dame. Obviously, the biggest third down of the night. This prime Purdue only rushes three. Screen pass flags down. Hughes is run out of bounds, but flags all over the Notre Dame backfield. It's holding on Notre Dame. I think Purdue will decline this and go ahead and, and force Notre Dame to punt. They're well short of the first down. Holding offense in 74. Penalty be declined. Fourth down. Second straight three and out for Notre Dame. 
There's the hold on Kerrigan. That's Sam Young, the right tackle with the takedown. A nice play by Mike Neal, 92, running from his defensive tackle position to make the play on the sideline. Good out. Moss to put. What I love about this time is number 17's on the other end. <laughs> we're not going to, we're not sure what he'll do, yeah. but he'll do something. And by that, I mean Aaron Valentine. There he is. Well, I'll guarantee you, if he gets a chance, he's going to try to do something. This is a dandy of a punt. He's going to call for a catch this time. So he played it safe with 47 yard kick, no return, but plenty of time left. For Purdue, almost six minutes, whether you're living in the Chicagoland area or if your heart never left the city, log on to ESPNChicago.com. Local coverage of the Bears, the Bulls, Cubs, Sox, the Blackhawks, plus all the area college football, including Northwestern Illinois and this Fighting Irish of Notre Dame team. ESPN Chicago, ESPN Boston, and coming soon, ESPN.com for Dallas, New York, and L.A. And there'll be a lot, I'm sure, on ESPNChicago.com about Notre Dame's game right now as they lead by three. But it's a precarious three-point lead. Here's a swing pass. Tossed out. Smith got leveled as he tried to cut it back to the inside. Picked up about four yards. I don't think Keith Smith's ever had a night like this. And uh, he'd like to catch a few more. You know, this is only the second full season that Smith has been a wide receiver. He came here as a quarterback, then he played some safety. Tonight, he is full-fledged, number eight, a wide receiver. <laughs> Elliott now is going to push Bolden on the other side of him. Change in protection a little bit. And he'll run the counter for Bolden, left side. Bolden to midfield. A nice recognition by Joey Elliott. They had a run play called. He changed it at the line of scrimmage and ran the other way. Moved his back over, changed the play, and had a nice run for Bolden. Five minutes left at the 50. Down three for Purdue with a first down. Here comes the blitz. Elliott throws the screen again. It's complete again. Carlos put a 20. Well, what a block by Bobby Berger, I believe it was. Or who? Watch outside here. Whoever this guy, <laughs> great block coming out here. Legal block in the back. Offense from the 17. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Boy, Kyle Adams got a great block. The penalty was on Aaron Valentine for the illegal block in the back, but a tremendous block by Kyle Adams to spring it loose. Well, they gained 20. It's a spot foul. It comes back. It's still first down at the yep. 40. That play by Carlos Gary Nord, the offensive coordinator, was talking about the junior college transfer to us, and he said, he's got like a wind-up toy. He runs fast, he catches well, he just has no idea what the coverage is he's looking at. That one, he was just heading in the right direction. Doesn't need to know coverage on that. Catch and run. Two tight ends here on first down. And this time, Notre Dame, after only about a yard pickup, Kyle McCarthy makes another tackle from his safety spot. And now we're down to 4.15 in the clock running. Remember, Notre Dame used two of its timeouts earlier. Purdue still with three. Yep. And I think if you're Danny Hope and Purdue at this point now, you've passed on the field goal attempt twice. Yep. I, I don't think you pass again. I think you get down in there. Obviously, you'd love a touchdown to take the lead, but you want to put this game into overtime at the very least. Elliott pumps one way, got a man wide open. Jason Taylor, touchdown. Side of the field. 
38-yard touchdown. Purdue's in front with 3.41 to go. Wiggs will try to make it a situation where Notre Dame needs a touchdown. An all-important point after. It's up. It's good. Kyle McCarthy does not get fooled very often, but the play action, Jason's going to come right out of here, and Kyle McCarthy's just going to watch the quarterback and go with the fake and does not pay any attention to Jason Taylor coming out of the backfield. You just don't see that very often out of the safety from Notre Dame, but he was completely fooled on the play, and nobody accounted for the tailback after the play fake. Great call by Gary North. And a cruise to the end zone by Taylor. 69 yards in five plays. 14 unanswered fourth quarter points for the Boilermakers. I don't know if Joe Tiller's shout cheer got him going, but they're shouting now. Yep. I think it helped. One time out left for Notre Dame. The kick to the 11 to Riddick. He's dangerous, but they do a nice job to bring him down as he crosses the 25. And now the ball game rests in the hands of the Notre Dame offense and Jimmy Clausen. There's your 14 unanswered points in the fourth quarter by Purdue. And plenty of time for Jimmy Clausen. The problem is, you know, he stood on the sidelines for a long time in this game, and uh, that, that couldn't do anything to help his toe or his right foot. I mean, he's got to kind of block that all out right now and make some tough throws. Draw play. Flags down, and this one was whistled. The crowd was so loud, I didn't hear the whistle. They stopped it before it ever got going. Offside, defense number 97, five yard penalty, first down. Todd, I watched Jimmy Clausen on the sidelines. He did his best to kind of walk around, jump up and down, throw the ball a little bit. But when I talked to him on Thursday, he said what he was worried about was precisely this the end of the game. That toe is starting to hurt more. Maybe the pain medication wearing off. First and five after the penalty. Clausen in trouble. Got away from one man. He zips it down the middle, complete to Golden Tate to the 45 on a first down. Well, that's a big time play. I mean, you can see Jimmy Clausen is, is hanging on with his feet. And he just does enough in the pocket, avoids the rush, finds a throwing lane, and hits Golden Tate. First down, Irish. At their own 45. Swing pass completes, but only a pickup of one to Robert Hughes. Again, wants to get rid of it quick. It's not there, has to double clutch and still makes the accurate throw. If he had thrown that the first time, Gerald Gooden would have slapped it back in his face. Purdue brings an extra man. Clausen got a safety valve over here in the tight end. Rudolph, Rudolph, all the way down inside the 35-yard line. There's the big tight end and a pickup of 22, and the crowd is silenced with 2.34 to go. Purdue is trying to just keep everything in front of them right now. They're, they're not... They don't want to give up an easy one, get beat deep, and they tried to play a little deeper coverage. And Jimmy Clausen did the right thing. He waited for an outlet receiver to pop open, and it just happened to be Kyle Rudolph. Remember, Notre Dame needs a touchdown. Trailing by four. 
Same kind of coverage. Quarters coverage right across the top. Four across. Hughes bounces off one tackler. Doesn't get through the second one. Dwight McLean, the senior safety, made the stop. And we're under two minutes. Notre Dame, one timeout left. Second down and six. Lawson in the shotgun. In trouble, down he goes. Gerald Gooden, who almost got to him when he tried to pass out on the left flat, is the guy that gets him here. Uh, Jimmy Clausen can't feel him. He doesn't see him, and he can't feel him until it's too late. And he does a good job of not losing the football when he was hit from behind. Final timeout taken by Notre Dame. They may only have two plays left in the football game. They trail by four with 1.16 to go. This is Al Serino. Team 10 inside two minutes to go. Reese, we're inside two minutes here. 120 left. Purdue 21. Notre Dame 17. Charlie Weiss and the Irish. Danny Hope and the Boilermakers. Third down and 14. For Jimmy Clausen on a bad wheel in the shotgun. Fires near side, got his man out of bounds. It's a first down at the 21-yard line. I mentioned how Purdue trying to keep everything in front, playing kind of a soft coverage. It was a four-man rush, and that was a lot of room on the sideline. You see the bail technique by Pender. He's dropping deep. He doesn't want to get beat behind him. And Robbie Paris, a nice catch on the sideline for a first down. Robbie Paris, first catch. How big was that? The Irish at the Boilermaker 21. They're out of timeouts. Clausen's going to go to the corner of the end zone. Tate incomplete. Nice coverage by David Pender, who has an interception tonight. And he gets up hobbling a little bit. Now again, Notre Dame has made a living on this so far early this season, throwing the ball deep and letting those receivers go up and make a play. And Pender in perfect position, timed the jump, saw the football, and played it the way you want. 27th career pass breakup for Pender. He moves up the Big Ten list. Not too many bigger than that one. Second and ten. Clawson going back that way again. Complete at the 10 to take, take. First and goal, Notre Dame. Clock will stop while they reset the chains. Now they can either spike the ball to stop it if they want to get in the huddle, or just line up and get ready to call a play. First and goal at the four. They came with a corner blitz from the bottom, and it just was, it took too long. It didn't have any effect on Jimmy Clawson, and he threw out the other side for an easy completion. Hughes will be in the backfield with Clawson. Golden Tate to the left. Camara to the right. Clawson to the end zone. Overshot his man in the back corner. And it was Robbie Paris who made the 12-yard catch earlier, looking for a flag and doesn't get one. <laughs> Lawson went down courtesy of Gerald Gooden again. Charlie Weiss wanted a, a late hit on his quarterback, I think. I tell you Remember, what. Notre Dame took over at its own 28 with 341 left. Now they're in the 10th play of the drive. I think you got to try to go after him. I don't think you give him time because he's too accurate. Even with a bad foot, he'll find an opening. You got to get after him. Kyle Rudolph's his tight end. They're going to keep it on the ground to Hughes. He's not going to get there. They had to just bulldog him down. Well, they can spike it and then have only one play left because it's third down. Notre Dame trying to line it up. Now, why did they stop the clock? I don't know. Purdue took a timeout, apparently. Oh, come on. I'm not sure that would be my call. 
Why aid them with the timeout? They would have had to hurry and to spike in it, as Todd said, or try to run a play and then hope they had time for another play. It looked like the Notre Dame sideline was signaling to spike the football, which meant they would have huddled and had one play on fourth down to try to win the game. Well, now they got two plays. Now they got two. Well, that might come back to haunt Purdue, that's for sure. It was a great defensive play to not get fooled on the run and to stop him short. Not only that, it took him about eight seconds to get Hughes yeah. down. Just inside the three-yard line. The only thing I can, I can think of is if Don Longholm wanted to change the personnel because he had more of a nickel defense in previously. Third and goal, Notre Dame. They're out of timeouts. 36 seconds to play. They need a touchdown. Jerry Clawson buys himself some time. Clawson lobs it. Incomplete. Now it is down to one play. <laughs> Purdue 21. Notre Dame 17. 29 seconds left, fourth and goal, the Irish. Hey, what if I'm Jimmy Cross and I'm thinking I'm trying to find my big tight end. And Kyle Rudolph right now is out in the slot. He's right out here. He's a big body. If he can just get between his man and the ball. Here's the ball game. Clawson to the end zone. Touchdown. And guess who? with a touchdown catch. A stunned Purdue crowd. And that was 6'6", 260, working against 6'1", 210. Physically, it's a mismatch, and Notre Dame used it to perfection. Nick Tausch in for the point after. Up and good. So now Purdue's got two timeouts, 24 seconds, all that remains, and they need a field goal to send this to overtime. Show you what Rudolph did. He's right here in the slot, and he's just going to run and get body contact and then just kind of break back out. And he's working against the safety, Dwight McLean, who, again, is 6'1", 200 pounds against 6'6", 260. And Jimmy Clausen does a nice job of throwing it to his outside arm, but you initiate the contact if you're Rudolph, get separation, and then the ball is there. Boy, some guts out of number seven, too, to come back in this game. How about that? Mm. He was six out of nine on that drive. And there's the reaction of his head coach and the reaction on the other side. Almost disbelief, I think, after the euphoria of taking the lead in this game with about 3.45 to go. Well, and you, 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 you got to go back to the timeout. It, it allowed Notre Dame to calm themselves, get their idea of what plays they wanted, and they got two plays instead of one. They would have had to spike it and get one play. They got two. Let's see if Purdue can get a good kickoff return. They still have two timeouts to work with. And they've got a big leg kicker. But this is a nice kick by Notre Dame. A yard deep. Royce Adams will bring it out. Adams only to the 20. With 20 left. 20 seconds. Remaining in regulation. And now it's Joey Elliott. This isn't a situation that he was expecting to be in. He took his team down, got the touchdown pass on a great play where the uh, McCarthy, the yeah. safety bit. Now what do you do? Well, you got 20 seconds. <laughs> you know, I mean, you got to try to do something. I mean, that's that's the one thing when you're a new quarterback. One of the first things you have to get used to is keeping focus and concentrating for a full 60 minutes. This is a 60-minute game tonight. Here comes John Tenuta with the blitz. Elliott's in trouble, and down he goes. 
And the blitz paid off. A loss of 12. A heralded recruit, Manti Teo, in there for the sack. Uh, couldn't have come at a better time for Notre Dame. They brought pressure. They, they have not brought as many blitzes tonight as they had in the first three games, but they have been very timely when they have decided to bring pressure. Now it's going to take a Purdue miracle because they're all the way back buried at their own eight and a half yard line. And they need to get it all the way down to about the 37 of Notre Dame to try to give their kicker a shot and they've only got 15 seconds to do it in. Boy just a couple minutes ago. This place was rocking and now you can hear a pin drop. Second and 23, that really doesn't matter. What matters is 15 seconds remaining. And a whole bunch of grass to be covered. It won't be covered there unless, well, they try to lateral it back. And it looks like Notre Dame's got the ball, and that will be kind of an ugly end to a very exciting ball game. Ethan Johnson's on the bottom of the pile. And now Jimmy Clausen can go out. He won't have to take a toe, just take a knee. Now there was the lateral on an end around, and then Valentine in trouble is just trying to get it back to anybody that might be in the vicinity that could advance it down. Wow. And Notre Dame is going to win one on the road. Well, for Notre Dame, Three and one. Three of their four games, all tough, down to the wire game. You know, they won the last two weeks in the last seconds of the game. They lost to Michigan in the last 10 seconds of the game. And they didn't panic when they got here tonight. And they win this one 24 21 on a dramatic drive engineered by Jimmy Clausen in the last three and a half minutes to win it. That's going to be a tough one to swallow for Purdue now. As they'll fall to one and three. And as Todd said, the Irish go to three and one. Let's get out to Aaron. All right, Brad, thank you. Well, you sit out the third quarter. You're out most of the fourth. What was the key for you on that game winning scoring drive then? I think I just need to stay loose. You know, coach told me if, you know, he needed me to go, I was going to go. And, you know, I'm just so proud of this team for fighting back. You know, every time we're down, you know, we're fighting back. And that's what I love about this team. How are you feeling? How was the toe feeling as you were trying to lead the team back? I feel great right now. I feel great. <laughs> this win is just is just awesome. Just a great feeling right now. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. All right, Brad. I got a feeling he can't even feel the toe. No. The euphoria is from the waist up, I'm sure, and especially from the neck up for Jimmy Clausen, who engineered the game winning drive. So the Irish went on the road in a thriller. 24 to 21 over the Boilermakers of Purdue. That's going to do it from West Lafayette. For Tom